Hey everyone, welcome here. We're playing Daggerheart, the open beta, and we are a bunch of experienced D&D players trying to see what we like and don't like about Daggerheart, how the system plays, and uh, yeah, we have some great people here. Maybe I can get you all to introduce yourself, uh, starting with uh, Alex. Sure. I'm Alex. I go by exploring the build on YouTube, that's pretty much it. Uh, today I'm playing Jordan Lightfoot, a halfling bard, who pretty much is always wearing a Hawaiian shirt wherever he goes. <laughs> uh, Jeremy next. Yeah, um, I'm Jeremy. I have the uh, channel Insight Check, you might have seen. I uh, am playing a dwarf warrior named Dallin Dreamseeker. Um, he is... Uh, a bit of a, a bit of a guy with something of a violent past who's looking to cleanse and atone for the future, and he's found some new friends and hopefully a way of doing that. And Julio, I am Julio. I don't have a YouTube uh, channel, but uh, today I'll be playing Drakarth, who is a, a Daemon rogue. Um, he's known. Uh, he's stolen a lot of stuff. He loves art. He loves stealing art. That's basically his what he goes after and uh he's a bit of a hedonist uh a little sassy uh yeah all right tim and i'm tim also don't have a youtube channel but i'm going to be playing burblup he's a ribbit frog person uh seraph who has found religion and has found himself to be revealed as the chosen one of that religion uh, and he is uh, silly and dumb, even though he's the chosen one. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Awesome. And uh, we're all Canadian. Canada's the best. <laughs> the, the, the land of the free and home of the brave or something like that. Cue, cue the, the anthem, right? <laughs> is that... uh, that's right. Yeah. Cue the barbershop anthem where it goes do 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 right at the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, we hit some technical difficulties along this recording process. A couple, really. Uh, one is that the recording got missed for the first portion of the game. So from the beginning up until our, the end of our first battle is missing. So I'll give you a little summary and then we can talk about it. But essentially, uh, the team uh, left on their voyage to deliver a package to a white fire arcanist in the city of Hush. As they were going on their way, they got ambushed by some thistle folk, and they had to take some serious injuries at the beginning, but they quickly turned the fight around. Uh, Dallin overthrew a carriage right on top of Burblug, that is Tim's ribbit character, and they ended up trapping one of the final thistle folk and began to interrogate it. And that's where we pick up. If you're interested in seeing combat, I will timestamp one final combat at the end of this session, and you can go over and see how it all flows there. Also, I'll timestamp where we discuss the pros and cons, what we liked and disliked about the session and the system at the end as well. Sorry if you guys missed something. Uh, <laughs> we don't know how long this recording was out. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, in summary, uh, Jordan has summoned an ice prison around this ribbit. To hold him in place, uh, he has the restrained condition now from that, which will give him a, a speed of zero. Um, and with fear, so uh, that is going to come back to me. Um, the rivet is shakily begins speaking. Oh, don't kill me! And uh, it's just going to use its turn uh, cowering. It is not going to attempt to attack or break free from the spike prison that he is in. I'll get up from the ground sort of after casting the spell and like dust off the shirt first and then make sure everything else is all intact and sort of go, uh, well, uh, what, uh, what are we doing with them? Cause like, he kind of owes me like point at the little tiniest little rip. It's barely anything, barely perceivable. But it's still there, so... What do, what do we want to do with them? Say, so, well, you know what, first... Uh, Dallin! Everything okay over there? 
Uh, it, totally fine. Nothing's gone wrong at all. Don't worry about it. We're everything is peachy keen. Just uh, handle the ribbon. I feel my legs. He said, "I can feel my legs. They feel great, and wondrous." And I'm just like fumbling through my pack. Of I do have a healing potion. I'm just like furiously trying to find my healing potion. Eventually, I do. I'm, I'm going to feed my healing potion to uh, oh. to Burblo. <laughs> That's nice. So is it is it one d four? Yeah, one d four. All right, roll it, roll a d4. Okay. <laughs> Sick. Uh, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take it. Yeah, he's feeling great. Don't worry, he's never felt his legs any better than he is right now. <laughs> trying to, like, push the cart off of him. <laughs> All right, I'm starting to get out. I'm going to get my axe, use it as kind of like a... A cane for a little bit, try to balance myself up. What happened? I can't. I look at I him like, I thought it. you said he was okay! He's, he's standing, isn't he? I Barely! Fall down. <laughs> <laughs> try to, like, support him. It's like weekend of birds yeah. here. I'm just trying to, like, get him to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what, what's oh, going on I, over I, there with the, with prayers? Oh. What's going on over there with the? Why is it winter over there? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a shirt and the, the something, and then got attacked, and he, the dude tried to run, so we stopped him because he has to pay for the shirt, and very yeah. much so. Well, on your side, I, I, I'm not with them. Yeah, any yeah. of you? Why? Why did you? What? What is this? Why are we being ambushed? Did you know we would be here? Well, uh, <clears throat> there's some bad thistle folks out here, and uh, they set up this trap for you, <clears throat> looking to, you know, take your stuff. And I said, no, no. That's it. That <laughs> you? You said you said, oh no. Said, no, no, and then, no. And then you I still said, no. I, 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 well, no. I mean, I came here to 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 warn you. They were just uh, here at the same time. I, I should go back though, uh, because um, you solved the problem already. Thankfully, you guys are so strong. I don't trust this. Hey, Jordan, is the the thing still in the thing in the cart? Oh. Oh, yeah. Let's peek in. I will actually enter or re-enter the cart this time. And uh, is the chest there? And also, are all three locks still locked? It looks untouched. Yes. Perfect. I'll poke the head out of the uh, back of the cart and say, we're all good. We're all good. All right. Well, someone thankfully moved the, the cart that was in the way. <laughs> So, uh, I think the coast is clear. Uh, I, I think we should bring him, though. I don't think we should leave him. I want to look at look at this guy, and I want to say... Dallin gets kind of serious for a second, and he looks over, and he goes, uh, What's your name? What are you doing here? How did you know we were here? I don't want no fake stories. Just tell me the truth. I would, if possible, I don't know how this works, if I decide, but, like, I do... I, so, one of my experiences is... Uh, I call them just like criminal inquisitors. So when I'm doing any sort of intimidation tactic for inquisiting someone, uh, I oh, get yeah. the plus two, plus two. So I don't know if that's the thing. I'm yeah, yeah. Out how so <laughs> yeah, if you want to use it, you you would take a hope, and you can add that experience to a sort of intimidation check. Okay, so, so you that would be a, a presence. Okay, so I can add two to my. Presence is plus one, so I'm adding three. <laughs> Ooh, well, 15 with super fear. As I'm just trying to, I want to, yeah, I want to find out if he's, how he's, I want to get a, a sense of his, like, 
is he is he really did he really go oh no or like was he really part of this like what's is there a bigger trap did they know about uh did they know about uh, the, the transport of this like how much does this guy know that's what i'm kind of trying to figure out yeah okay uh with your investigation in criminal inquisitive <laughs> background uh you can you can tell pretty clearly he is lying he was here to rob you blood uh um as he's speaking he keeps blubbering up um i i, I we we came here uh, because we we needed food and uh merchants often have lots of stuff and and we sell it um and i uh, yeah, maybe maybe it's not the best thing to do, and I'm sorry, but uh, um, I wasn't the one to kill that merchant. Um, I'm just like an underling, um, you know. But uh, we we uh, I, I won't hurt you anymore. Uh, I, what could I do for you to make it up? So what I can kind clear of weapons, the road up? What kind of weapons is he holding? Uh, he has dropped. Uh, two daggers. Two, oh, that are oh, yeah, him. Two, two daggers. You don't say. <laughs> I, I point at him and I say, "Look, no offense, friend, but from one thief to another, the the things that killed the driver of that cart were was a dagger to the throat, and here you are with two daggers. So come clean. D did you kill them or not? I didn't tell you the truth. Uh, it was it was the, the ribbon over there. It was it was a." Uh, uh, the uh, the one with the the cloak. Oh, I, oh, sorry. Okay, so it wasn't you, but it was Complete. your group of people. Right, exactly. Got it. You take responsibility for all the things that your team does. I look at uh, Dallin. Sometimes. Oh shoot. Fur <laughs> uh, blub. What would the hmm. silence have us do? What? What? Sh how? How should we handle this? Hmm. There are three great tenets to the Great Silence. There is peace, there is tranquility, and there is death. <laughs> um, I need to think about it, but I'm leaning towards death. I'm in a lot of pain. I got stabbed a few times. <laughs> Nothing personal, it's just the Great Silence. Um... <laughs> I kind of want to look at this ribbit, and I kind of want to feel like, like, Gerald, is that you? Are you? <laughs> is that you, Gerald? <laughs> it looks like my cousin Gerald. <laughs> <laughs> I asked you if you knew. Tell you what. <laughs> tell I, you, I don't tell know you what. every ribbit. Roll, roll me if you want. We can spend a hope, uh, and we'll roll for it. And uh, oh. it, it, if it, if you succeed, it'll be your cousin. That is super <laughs> worth the hope. Oh, am I just rolling? Okay, okay. Do I add anything to this, or just a straight roll? Uh, so it'd be a. We'll roll to just the hope die. Uh, so that would be uh, just a one d twelve. And okay. let's say uh, six, sorry, seven or higher uh, will be, okay. yeah. Mm, okay, okay. Quickly before I roll this. I forgot to, at the beginning of the session, to do my prayers, which gives me two <laughs> D4s that I can add to a die or to reduce damage or all these kinds of things. Can I roll those preemptively just in case? Because I really want him to be my cousin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and roll those. <laughs> okay, I've got a two and a four, so we should be good here. Okay. I will roll the hope die. A five. I'll add... You said I needed a seven or higher? Yeah. Okay, I'll add the two, just, just for narrative's sake. <laughs> All right. Uh, sorry. When, what's your cousin's name, and when was the last time you saw him? <laughs> all right, all right. Uh... This is also my cousin, Gerald. Uh, he is uh, not really a He's not my first cousin. He's like my third cousin. He's my aunt's 
uh, boyfriends. I don't know. So, he's a cousin. But uh, <laughs> last time I saw him was maybe, oh, maybe like three years ago at the family reunion up at Lake Winnawahu. It was uh, it was a time. Uh, I didn't really like Gerald. He's he, he's a little bit as uh, well as you can see. He's a violent type, uh, and he was violent even when he was younger and growing up. Like to prove his strength with the tongue wrestling competitions we would have as ribbits. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I had to hold myself there. I'm like I can't I can't react outwardly with disgust right now. But oh my god, <laughs> it's a culture thing. It's a culture thing. Uh, <laughs> he can always try to jump higher than everyone else, but um, yeah, he's he's my aunt's cousin's brother's son. A distant relationship, but I, I never forget a face. I never forget a face. It's Gerald. What are you doing here, Gerald? What are you doing here? Is that you? Yes, it's me. It's Burblub. It's Burblub. Um, yes. I, this is my, this is my cousin. I would never harm my cousin. Oh yeah. Who, who did get you me out of here? It's, it's cold in here. Oh okay. Well, you did try to kill us, so I mean, <laughs> you kind of deserve this, Gerald. That, I mean, you know, I, people make mistakes. I didn't know it was you. If it was you, I, I definitely wouldn't have. That's true. Let me ask you something, Gerald. Um, do you... How do you want to greet the silence? Uh, with peace, tranquility, or death? <laughs> uh, uh, peace, I think. Hmm. Peace sounds like a good one. Okay. Well then, please tell us exactly who hired you why you were sent on this road? Was it for us? Or what's your target here? And then perhaps I shall grant you your 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 peace. Like Jafar moment here. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to lean back to, to Dallin. I'm really confused. Is, is this racist or is it not racist? <laughs> so I don't know anymore. I was just joking <laughs> at the beginning. Jordan, how's your shirt? <laughs> That's fine, but you know, as long as this guy pays for it before he meets his maker, that's uh, we'll call it square. Is that okay. what peace means? Look, is he gonna make meet his maker? Look, no. love, that's not what you mean, right? <laughs> um, look, we, we aren't hired by anybody. Okay, we just rob people here at this spot. It's got it's a nice spot for an ambush. I mean, what, you got, got something good to rob or something? We just rob anyone who passes here. Gerald. Come on. Are you telling the truth? I can't tell with you, because you're kind of frozen and stuck with a bunch of wounds. <laughs> My tongue is stuck to this ice here! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just uh, the worst. I'm sorry, Gerald. But seriously, mm -hmm. uh, is he telling the truth? Can I tell? I would say with uh, Daryl's previous role uh, and experience, uh, he believes that you're telling the truth. He's telling the truth. Okay, so he's telling the truth. Oh, Gerald. Uh, Didn't seem to be a targeted hit. Just, just for happenstance. Happenstance. Okay. Oh, Gerald, Gerald. Uh, you, you know, you're, you're disappointing the family, man. This is... This is too much. You're robbing people. All right, Gerald. Okay, let me tell you something. Uh, we're going to let you have your peace. You can go off as long as you, you know, swear to the great silence that you will continue on in peace. If not, death is always an option. But before you go, you need to pay for the shirt. That's a, that's a fair trade. I, I uh, yeah, I, I definitely, I, I didn't hurt your shirt, but he, I definitely have some, some gold I can spare for that. Um, well, we I mean, I take res full responsibility for my actions and the actions of these people here. Um, uh, whatever the Great Silence wants, I'm fully willing to, uh, uh, to, to give, you know. Um, so, anyway, can I get out of this ice? And I promise uh, I'll, I'll 
I won't do this again, and I'll keep all the other thistlefolk away from you. Okay, what? Uh, is there a lot of nasty thistlefolk around? I mean, most of them are not nasty at all, but, you know, there's other people like me, Rob. Uh, I mean, out of 100% necessity. You didn't, bring, you didn't bring poor little Robert, your brother, into this, did you? Oh, good heavens. He's, he's farming back home. He's, he's, okay, he's, that's, he's safe. that's a relief. Robert was nice. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Um, One second, please. I'm going to kind of go over to the guys. Okay, he says this is it, but... um. Should we just kill him? I think we should just kill him. I, this is too many loose ends. This is the great silence. There's nothing more peaceful than a good wrath. Swift death. Wrath already has his his hand on his dagger. I'm like, that's what I thought we were gonna. I thought that's what the peace meant. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm gonna pop out of the cart, walk around a little bit, and just like look up at the trees and point. And I say, "Oh, guys, no way! Those uh, sable fox thingies. The, those, those things are still there. That's that's crazy." Looking a little peckish, I think they are. Wow, that's so neat. I think they'll have yeah. some lunch now. <laughs> yeah. Um, honestly, uh, based off of the religion that I made up earlier this morning, um, <laughs> uh, I would definitely say that, uh, like I said, the three tenets, one is death and there's peace, tranquility, but he hasn't proven himself to really, truly be peaceful. Um, I... I think morally, I'd be okay with killing him if we did that. Just saying, <laughs> like, if we like, just based off of as a like trying to get into the mechanics of it, like as a seraph, I think it would be fine morally, based off of what the religion says. We don't want to get canceled. Cool. Okay. Sorry about that. So, yeah. Um, tell me which silence is awaiting this <laughs> rivet. Um. <laughs> it's a big moment. Uh, I I think I'll be true to my word and I'll, I'll go with peace. Because I was reminded that he is my cousin. And so there is a little bit of peace. There's some redeeming qualities. But I'll give him this. I'll give him this. So I'm going to let you go. But... Should we find you, Gerald? Mixed up in this later. You won't. We'll, we'll kill you. Like the great silence will greet you with death. Okay. No, honestly, that's fair. That's fair. Okay. Um, that's yeah. that's peace. All right. And he oh, he he to... hops hops out of there as fast as he yeah. can. Wait, we're letting him go? I thought we were gonna stuff him in the trunk. Oh yes, that's right. Joe, okay. come back! Oh, he's gone. <laughs> I'm not. Come <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna say, oh, you're right, and I was gonna use my divine weapon. I was gonna throw my axe, <laughs> <laughs> grapple again. Yeah. Bring it back. Poor guy's gonna get dragged through the brush too many times in one day. <laughs> Rip oh, Okay. Well. <laughs> That is, uh, that's that then. Um, tell me what, uh, you guys plan to do next. I'm assuming now the path is cleared, right? The path, yeah. thanks to the very safe, uh, deed by <laughs> Daryl, it is clear. Dallin. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Dallin. That was Gerald and Dallin in one. <laughs> Daryl. Yeah. Uh, we think, yeah, I mean, we can take a quick look, see, make sure there's nothing else kind of like immediately yeah. right up at us again. But otherwise, I think we can uh, hop back in our cart, or I'm, I'm good to hop back in the cart and keep on trucking on. Shotgun. Uh, the, the, there are a couple of gold coins left on the ground, uh, Gerald, uh, for your shirt, oh, yes, for the shirt as well. Oh, yeah. Pick those up. Uh, if everyone I'm wants to drink take... my health potion as well, as yeah, we get into it. Sure. Gonna... How, how is everybody doing for, like, health, hope, all sorts of resources? Oh, 
I'm pretty yeah. good. Well, I only have one hit point, and oh my still, I still have two hope, so I'm good. No stress. All right. <laughs> Another one. I know. That's <laughs> a bad luck like here. I've got. Oh my. I've got three hit points instead of one left. So we're good. That's something. I'll live. All right. <laughs> well, you guys hop back onto the wagon, and you begin continue on through the woods. This time. Uh, protected by Gerald, you know, thankfully he's got your back now, uh, and you're undisturbed for the rest of the, the trip. Um, eventually, uh, you see a, a large stone pillar, uh, that is on the side of the path. It's carved top to bottom in ancient dwarven runes, and it is, uh, clearly the demarcation of the village of Hush. You can see deeper in, uh, there are some bits of housing that is popping over uh, the top of the trees. Uh, there's one quite tall one that you can see in the distance. Other than that, you see like signs of, of housing that's interspersed with vegetation. It, it looks like a, it is a, a town that is built in the middle of nature. Um, as you pass this stone marker, uh, you feel a small sensation, like a pop of a bubble. And after that, the uh, sounds of friendly chatter and the uh, hubbub of the town begin to be louder to your ears. There are a few smiling faces that pass you as you uh, uh, enter the village proper. Uh, there are some people waving and nodding at your party. It looks like it's a peaceful and, and friendly town. There's lively music that's drifting over from some corner of town. And uh, you have officially arrived in the, the village of Hush. Uh, so your next goal is to find the Whitefire Arcanist to deliver this package. So what would you guys like to do? Has anyone we'll say. of us been here before? Good question. If either, if any of you have, uh, have a reason to, I'm happy. Well, Wrath is definitely a city boy, so... Yeah, a little town. Dallin is, yeah, Dallin's definitely never been here before. I feel like Hush is... It's too much of a coincidence for it not to be associated <laughs> with the order of great silence so i think there's a little shrine here to the to the silence that so i've been here before i think yeah see any more of your family uh, i think we might any... have killed them all but uh, <laughs> but honestly i don't really i only recognize gerald but the rest you never forgot the face. <laughs> <laughs> this this village is is not full of rivets unlike the, the party that attacked you. Uh, it's full of uh, all sorts of folks. Um, you know, you can see some sort of mixtures of, of animals and uh, some, like, walking fungus. You see, like, a, a, a robot sort of person. Um, you see dwarves, elves, humans. Uh, it seems like quite the, quite the mix of peoples here. Um, the, the, the biggest... Uh, part of this side of town is the Clover Tavern that you're familiar with. It's like a six-story building that's wrapped around a large tree. Uh, and that's kind of the one that's that's dead ahead that you guys can could see peeking over the, the treetops. Sorry, not the treetops, but you can see peeking over the foliage, the lower branches. That's uh, as good a place as any to start. I mean, I'm um... Can go yeah, for I could a, drink. Use a drink, yeah. yeah reading us, speak the same language, reading each other's minds. <laughs> sure. Yeah. There's a. As you approach the Clover Tavern, uh, there's a lot of good natured conversation. Uh, you're familiar that the Clover Tavern has kind of a reputation where everybody, as they enter, should remove their shoes and they hang them on a line and as you're there 
uh, someone eventually shines all your shoes and fills the insides with goodies and, and things for you to take as, as you leave. Um, so that's kind of like the notable thing about the Clover Tavern. What, what a magical place. Get loot bags. In your shoes. <laughs> it's like a kid's birthday party. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Shame I wear sandals. Oh, well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hang out my immaculate boots and I uh, put them on my... Uh, I hang them up on the on the line, wait, ex you know, ex expecting a little bit of an extra goodie bag since there wasn't much cleaning that needed to be done. But you know, <laughs> I'll take a couple extra, you know, chocolates or whatever. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> as you as you guys enter, there's a an older dwarven woman with a thick beard, uh, and she's carrying a large barrel of ale as she's walking past. Hey there! The newcomers, eh? Yeah. yeah nice. Do you know her? Do you know her, Dallin? How does that feel? Does that feel good? <laughs> <laughs> Not always. Not always. Nora, is that you? <laughs> it's 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 lots of honey. Uh, oh. we met before. Uh, I, I, I did did. did. <laughs> did Burble see me just fail miserably? <laughs> yes, yes, I did. <laughs> I, I, I turned back and it's gonna look. look, look. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry, I must have uh, must have mistaken you for uh, my cousin's aunt's boyfriend's daughter, uh, uh, Nora. Sorry, that's it's a common mistake. I, your beard is marvelous. I must say, thank you for oh. uh, blessing me with its sight. Oh yeah, you flatter me, and uh, you're, you're such a young lass. You mistake me with uh, oh. so nice. Well, she, she's actually really old. I, that's, <laughs> oh, <laughs> never mind. I take it back then. You old scallywag. I'm gonna this lean into like Jordan. That. I'm gonna lean in over to Jordan. Like, is this how dwarves flirt? Is this what I'm watching right now? I assume there is so much sexual tension in there right now. This is probably just filled like with tribalistic wow. mating rituals that date back generations, generations. Is that what I'm feeling right now? Got it. Probably. I thought I is see that you got the quite smell a... from all the shoes that are hanging up, one or the other. I see you got quite some some fancy toys on here. Let me see. Let me see what you've got. She looks over and she's uh, inspecting. Uh, the you know the, the hilt of your of your sword and your weapons. Ah, these look like they're decent quality. Would you pick them up? Oh, I, uh, I I'd love to tell you a good story, but really, I I murdered hundreds of people, and I, this is just one of one of their swords. Ah, so would you name this one then? Must be a quite a a painful one. Oh, I mean, not really. I don't really think too much about it. I like to call it Cutty Face, maybe, but otherwise, that's about all I got. It's, uh, he likes to cut faces, and hence the name. I lean into Jordan again, I'm like, seriously, though, is this, is this how it goes? Is, what, is this part of the rituals? Like, I, I, I think so. I think uh, Inspect the Hilt was code for something. It must have been. It's somewhere along the line. <laughs> God, I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> Uh, she seems a bit taken aback by your uh, uh, straightforwardness uh, about about this, and uh, she, she ends up kind of sitting here, uh, lo looking around a bit, and uh, say, "Well, uh, in enjoy your stay here then. Uh, don't make no trouble here." I don't plan to, but I do have a question for you. Hi. Right. We're looking for something. Um, the white something or other, I can't remember. <laughs> Arcanist. Oh, uh, Arcanist. Oh, <laughs> Thank you, Jordan. Thank you. What he said. Yeah. No problem. Happy to wingman. It's fine. In the the Arcanist, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's uh, she lives in a place of the southern side of town. You gotta travel through some of some fields to get there. She's uh, all strung up up there. Um, she's normally pretty busy. Doesn't you don't see much of her face, but uh, if you come. Looking for her from far out of town. I'm 
I'm sure she'll probably see ya. I'm not Wait. entirely certain what that means. She'll see us. She'll down see down us. ask her. Is she watching the road? Is she watching the I road? I mean when I say she'll see ya, I mean like she'll she'll meet ya. She friendly? She'll she'll likely have a meeting with ya. If you're well, from out of town, okay. coming from far away. We're not talking like the literal oh. sense of seeing us. We're talking more like <laughs> okay. I don't yeah. really under I don't really understand a lot of things that people say. I'm I'm gathering that. Maybe I should be talking to someone else in your party. <laughs> I mean I had the same issue, so <laughs> I've had a lot of uh, a lot of brain damage in my time. Okay, maybe I should write these instructions down for a year. <laughs> that would be useful, thank you. Okay. Uh she she heads on over, sets down the cask veil, and goes over to the counter. She like exchanges some words with the the barkeeper, and he kind of looks over at you a little worried. And then they uh, she comes back over with a piece of paper. H here you go. Here's instructions to meet the White Fire Arcanist. I lean over and whisper to Wrath. He got the digits. Oh, I punch him in the arm. <laughs> like, oh. give him props on the arm. Say, oh, thank you. Um, and I just nod. Just and there's <laughs> good really awkward drinks thing. here. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll take and... you up on that. I think. Uh, but before we do that, that wasn't. Where's the box? That wasn't an offer. <laughs> That's a good like question. A Where's the box? This is a great question. We are terrible. <laughs> there you go. We're the Jason Spaceman, would copy, please. Um, did we? Did we just? Did we leave the box outside? You guys are. You guys are in the cart. Cart's covered. Uh, uh, yeah, security. I would say you guys have like pulled up your cart with your horse. It's just standing outside the front. Uh, and uh, you guys are just inside the entryway, so I would say it's fair enough for one of you guys to be able to keep a, an eye on it as you're, you know, standing there. Sure. Uh, it's definitely not me. I'm like heavy I... flirting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my eyes are kind of on the side of my head, so I can kind of keep one eye this way. One eye. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Actually, can I go sit uh, or stand by the door, see if any. Uh, Local thieves are, are eyeing us. We can just keep an eye watch and see if anyone's scoping it out or look for behaviors yeah. that I would exhibit if I was trying to steal it. Sure. Yeah, let's. Um, if you've, you've got some sort of experience related to that, then. Uh, I'm a thief. Just, uh, yeah. Sounds good to me. You're keeping an eye out, watching up and down. It, it does seem to be a very friendly place. People are interested in your wagon and stuff because it's different. Um, you gather people aren't really looking to, to scope it out in, in terms of like a heist or, a, you know, to hit it. Um, just kind of wondering what it's here for and whatnot. Okay. Yeah. So, um, are you guys sitting down for drinks then? You said you want to take her up on that. Uh, uh, or are you guys uh, staying Wait, with the wagon? Yeah. I'll grab a drink. I'll drive. I'll grab a quick drink out of mine. Sure. Uh, how Does large it... is the tavern in terms of range bands? Is it like if you're inside it at the oh. doorway? Is everything like within close range, more or less? Or mm, no, I would. It's 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 rather large. Okay. Um, I would say it, yeah, a little further than close. Maybe it's like you know forty feet to the other end. Um, okay. Yeah, and then there's a spiral staircase right beside you that that goes upwards. It looks like it right. gets smaller as it gets higher, but the, this first floor is about forty feet from your end. Okay. Yeah. Um, as you guys are. Uh, wait, so someone you're gonna 
go sit down and drink or or uh yeah. some of you are watching I'll, the uh, wagon you splitting up i'll, I'll stand near the, near the entrance i'll sit down for a drink okay how about the two of you in. uh meander around i'm just gonna walk around see if i can find some peace and tranquility yeah. i'm gonna do a very stereotypical bard move and i'm gonna start uh just playing some nice music set the mood uh for the tavern i'll like hop up on a table i'm going to try to be within close range of pretty much the party because uh the troubadour mechanically actually does have songs they can play to provide some bonuses uh as long as the allies are in close range oh, that's pretty cool uh, it is pretty interesting so i'll probably do i'll play a relaxing song which of course will be sarsaparillaville since Bimmy Jeffett taught it to me, and it's just a perfect song to relax and unwind after a fight on the road. Uh, and then if there's an encore, I will play a heartbreaking song. Uh, I don't know why it's heartbreaking, but if we play a heartbreaking song, everybody's going to be able to gain a hope. And uh, the relaxing song would let everybody heal one hit point as well. Um, the heartbreaking song will probably be a, a love ballad to my lady love who broke my heart. Uh, and it will be the Jordan Lightfoot song, Did She Mention My Name? Uh, and I will I will go through and play both of those. Uh, and it doesn't seem to be there's a role with it. It's just once per long rest I can do each yeah. of the songs one time. Yeah, you just have to sing them, and that's that's all that happens. Perfect. I will not um, actually sing them. <laughs> the, uh, there, there is currently um, a, a musical number going on, uh, a trio. Uh, and uh, but once they take a take a break in between songs, you find your opportunity to uh, to hop up on the table that you, you and and Dallin are drinking at, and uh, play your Sarsaparillaville, and uh, you guys will will gain those benefits then. Or so, so everybody grab a hope. Everybody heal one hit point if you lost one. Yeah, sick. Oh, I lost a few. <laughs> oh, I don't know what happened. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody hit me with a freaking wagon. <laughs> Who could have me? <laughs> freaking ribbits. Hate those guys. The worst. It's a, it's a, it's a classic it's a terrible. Ribbit on ribbit hate crime. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> um, Raph, as you're standing watching guard, there is a, a small little boy. Uh, he's like jiggling along to the music as he comes along and he starts pulling the shoes down one by one and, and shining them to the beat and, and pulling some stuff out, candy, and filling them up and stringing them all back up uh, as you are as you guys are sitting there drinking. Can I uh, call the boy over? Hey! How's I it going? I take a, a gold. I, I actually don't know how much a gold is actually worth in this in this setting, but one gold. And I will say, you see those boots? And I'll point to uh, Dallin's. <laughs> so those are my boots. Can you give them a really, really, really extra good shine for me? Yeah, man. No problem. Don't even need. Don't even need a tip. That's what we do. Oh, well, it's perfect then. Just want to make sure that my boots are, when I come get them, will be extra shiny. Yeah, he spits on them a bit. <laughs> Fills it up with like strands of licorice and some kind of like wrapped up candies and uh, a little like action figure toy. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, no worries, man. Come back anytime. If you want a tip, you can go over the counter over there. They'll, the bar always takes tips. I'm not allowed to. Wait, they take your tips? No, I just, you know. I take my tips. I I take, you know, I'm not allowed to help handle money. Oh. Okay, well, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, not since the last instant. <laughs> <laughs> Wrath is starting to be very suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys spend some time relaxing here. Um, is there anything you're looking for in particular or anything you want to... You want to find there's a um, a humanoid robot looking thing on the table beyond. It looks like he's playing games with a uh, couple of rougher looking folks. He's got like this little 
fox bat thing on his shoulder. They're playing with games with acorns and stuff. Um, yeah, there's the uh, that that dwarven bearded lady. She's uh, coming back down the stairs. Looks like she's carrying another barrel of ale. Looks like she's uh, does some some work here or something. Um, but everyone here seems very relaxed. Seems like a very calm, happy place. I'm just pining over the love of my life here. <laughs> I'm going to uh, make my way over to the guys playing cards. But on my way there, I'll pump... Uh, what was the, the like, bar maiden? What was her name? The dwarf? Laza. Ladna? Laza. Laza, Laza, Laza. Okay. So, as I make my way past Laza, I'll kind of say, Um, my friend Dalit. He's... He stumbles over his words, but he's a real nice guy. Give him another chance. Okay? Okay, I'm gonna go play some cards. <laughs> and then, I kind of, like, nudge her that way. It's kind of like... What I think is being a wingman, but I might accidentally make him look... I might I might make him look like a little bit like he's a, like an injured puppy, but you know, chicks dig puppies, so it might work out. And I'm gonna go over and just say, mind if I sit in on a round? And I'll play around. Kind of like... Yes, come join us. Just... Ooh, okay, what are we playing? It's uh, called Acorn Squash. Acorn Squash. Okay, I've never heard of it. Yeah. Let's play. <laughs> All right. He deals you in. Um, we can. Are you gonna bet some money? Oh gosh. Uh. Yeah. Uh, sure. Uh. Um, All right. I'll put two gold coins down. But as I do, I'll be like. Well, that's a strange so folk in the woods, especially on the road coming in, don't you think? Put it oh, down. you saw them. Yes, lots of thistle folk attacks lately. Mm. And then I'll grab another two coins, not knowing the game at all. <laughs> I'll just be like, <laughs> yeah, someone might uh, know some things about that, don't you think? I was gonna slide them over. Yeah, um, there's been lots of attacks recently. Thistle folk normally are calm folk, but the ones that leave, they tend to be a little more uh, dangerous. Grab two more gold coins. Hmm. But, like, like, I think that I'm bribing him, but I don't think that he knows that what I'm doing at all. Is is this a, a bribe, or are you playing? Oh, I'm playing. My, like, <laughs> frog eyeball. <laughs> you just, you lick it? Oh, <laughs> yeah. no. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um... I I can tell you whatever you want. Oh, You'll oh, grab your coins. Where do these bad uh, this folk like to hang out, and why are they doing this? Um. Well, there is a this folk village deeper in Sablewood that the farmers and more peaceful. This will folk live. Um, it's possible that the more aggressive ones have a different hiding spot. I'm not certain. Uh, they don't often have outsiders in their peaceful place. I doubt they would accept outsiders in the uh, the with the robbers. That's true. Well, it's been lovely talking to you. And as I go, I'm going to place two more gold coins, but I'm going to... I wrote as an experience, I've got sticky hands. So I feel... So I'm going to... I'll leave, like, two, but the rest will be stuck to my hands, and I'll, like, sneakily drag them back. 
<laughs> sure. <laughs> Roll me um, a finesse. Finesse. Okay. Well, there we go. Okay. Nine, nine with hope. Uh, plus plus uh, one. Oh, sorry. What's your bonus? Uh, with experience is a plus one. My finesse is a plus zero. So ten. Okay. So it's a total ten. You'll take a hope back uh, because it's with hope. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you you place two more coins down, and then you the other rest of the coins just stick to your fingers that you place down. So you uh, recover the other <laughs> missing coins that you uh, have have placed for it. Okay. Well, good good day then. Thank you, metal man. And I'll get up and I'll make my way back to. Excuse me. The rest of the group. What? Did you say something? Oh, I'm oh, just, yes, I'm... Alan, I hear you. Yes, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See you later. And then I'll. Uh... <laughs> I'm gone. All right. <laughs> Are you guys ditching the, the, uh, the tavern? The crowd. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna gonna make my way out. As soon as they see Dallin making his way for the door, I get the boots, I put them on, and I get into the carriage. All right. You crush a, a boot full of uh, candies with your feet and <laughs> hop in the carriage. Sorry, I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys grab your you guys grab your boots and uh, and head on out. Yeah, make way quick. Um, it is getting late into the evening, uh, but uh, you have directions now to head to the the Arcanist's home. Uh, I think they're still going around. It is dark outside, but uh, there are you know lanterns and torches throughout the town to to keep things well lit. So it looks like uh, it's a decent nightlife anyway. Did the directions say on them, or I may have missed it as well? Is the Arcanist town or the Arcanist's home still within like the bubble of hush or would we have to go back out into the uh wood and then like head around to it it doesn't say in the instructions it just says uh head south through the farmlands <laughs> and you'll see a hanging house okay a hanging house interesting okay, okay. Yeah. All right. Sure. So as you guys continue on with your uh, with your boots shined and full of goodies on your way, uh, you are riding your carriage. You make your way past the homes of the village, and eventually uh, they the towns kind of uh, the, the the homes uh, kind of die out, and it spreads out into a, a large uh, farmland. Uh, there are still posts with lanterns lighting the way as you go. Uh, there is uh, some sort of glowing blue, mossy-looking thing that covers all the fields. Um, but it looks like they're overall like these thriving groves. Um, there, there are um, some larger trees here that have faces carved into them. And uh, as you continue along, you see one very large tree... Uh, in the distance, and uh, there seems to be some uh, dangling home uh, uh, coming down from one of the larger branches. It's probably about um, 60 feet up in the air from the bottom. Do we know if, and does anyone here know if the faces have any significance? The ones uh, carved into the trees. Yeah, uh, I would say, uh, yeah. Tim, uh, Burblub's been here before. Um, I would say that, yeah, there's, there is a, uh, a certain holiday here uh, where uh, people wear masks and they uh, you know, carve the faces into the trees. Um, and it's sort of kind of like a evening, sorry, a, an autumn festival. So it's a celebratory thing. It's not a... A warning yeah. of some sort. Yeah, they're not like 
haunting faces or anything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as you approach the tree, you realize that there is a uh, a large rope. It's a it's a braided rope, and it is uh, very thick, like as big as like a giant's forearm. And it is anchored, wrapped around a very large boulder, strung up around the branches of the tree, and then it is how it supports a large circular, uh, multi-storied building. Uh, sorry, um, structure that is hanging. There are some soft, glowing, flickering lights uh, in the windows that show that there's still some activity or people awake in there. What would you like to do? This is our final delivery destination. Is that the case? That's uh, your, your instruction, yes. I look at the group and say, so, okay, looks like we're here. Do we know what we're delivering? Yeah. At all? Do we have any details? Don't they know? We got it. Yeah. Chest with three locks. Could open it. Probably a teapot. I think. Probably, yeah. It was, it was a, it was a teapot, teapot kettle. Yeah. It was something okay. nice. Is it heavy? I don't know. It is heavy. It's heavy. If we yeah. rattled it around, um, I'll try to rattle it around a bit, see if, if there's anything moving inside. Yeah, there's like a soft, like, clunk, clunk. I want to open it so I bad. <laughs> I... I just want to make sure we're not delivering the wrong thing to the wrong person. Uh, well, three locks definitely says something. Interesting. Hmm. Is, is this someone that, that like we would have heard, this person that we're delivering to? Is this someone that like we possibly would have heard of, heard of like outside of Hush, or are they just kind of like very specifically known? They're not like well, they're not. Are they a well-known individual? Like, would we know if they're shady as all hell, or if they're just like? Or do we just not know anything about them? I guess uh, if they're not known outside of the city, we might not know anything about them. Is Dallin familiar with uh, the magical circles of the world? Definitely not. Okay, I'd say you probably are not familiar with her then. Yeah. Okay. Um, I look over at the rest of the group, and I look over and say, I mean, uh, this was given to us directly from the king, and, I mean, I've had unfortunate relationships with him before, and I know that he's a little bit of a sketchy guy sometimes, so uh, I feel like the things that we're holding in this chest, considering all the locks on it, is uh, probably not the goodest of stuff. Um, I don't know if I don't know if uh, Jordan, if you have any magic to be able to, I don't know, appear inside under some locks, or if we just want to brute force it open, or maybe sticky fingers over here can uh, slide a hand in. But uh, we'll I, I, I don't know. I can't brute force it open, but I could give us some extra protection if brute forcing it open causes big surprise. Of some sign of some kind. What do you think, Raph? I, I don't know. As you say, uh, you've had some shady dealings with the king. Yeah. At the end of the day, he hired you. So, Burblub, what what would Ger what would Gerald do? Gerald. Well, that guy's a piece of slime. Uh, he'd probably <laughs> open it before he even got a chance to even get in the cart. <laughs> but uh, can I pray to the Great Silence to see if they could lead me? Is there some sort of a role we could figure out there? Or um, <laughs> You're looking to see if you should open the package based just on like, the just Great like, Silence? Like a, yeah, if the Great Silence would 
say this is a, a path that uh, it has led me to to open this box. I would say some tenants of the Great Silence probably would, would value secrecy. Mm -hmm. um, and in regards to that, like honoring one's uh, words for secrecy. Um, so you probably would not be advised by leadership in the Great Silence to, you know, break your your bond of secrecy and, and or, or like peek into secret matters um, that are you were hired at least to 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 keep. I'll tell you what. Let's let's bring it up. Let's to make the delivery happen, and if we get. Gerald vibes. We'll kill her and keep the box for ourselves. What's our safe word? Pl plutonium. Plutonium. Okay. Mm. Yes. Let's My hope there's no plutonium in this box. <laughs> I certainly <laughs> hope not. I don't know what it is. I just worry that it might be in the box. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, what is your plan? The house is dangling uh, 60 feet in the air. Are there any stairs or anything? Any obvious mechanism of entry into the house? There are not. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Hello? There, you call loudly, but there's no response. You said there was not a... <laughs> You said there was a huge rope dangling? Yep. Can I try tugging on the... Either tugging on the rope or saying if it's fixed enough that I could climb it? Yep. Uh, yeah, you, you, you go uh, and tug on the rope. It's very taut. Um, and since it's braided and so large, there are decent handholds. Uh, you probably could shimmy up it if you uh, wanted to. I look back at them and say, I, I think we gotta climb. Who's gonna carry the the thing? Not oh, Dallin. I point at the chair. Yeah, okay. I do have a long tongue. You could tie it to the thing. Make it go up. <laughs> listen, listen, way. listen, friend. I know you have a tongue. But we're gonna have to talk about appropriate uses and inappropriate uses of that tongue. <laughs> Because there are a few it's things a you have said time. in this very short time that I've known you that trouble me <laughs> quite a bit. I just you need to embrace frog culture. Ribbit culture is beautiful. <laughs> it is all about water. It's, it's and all about the tongue. Flies and tongues. <laughs> tongue is is a is a is a mighty a mighty symbol of a true ribbit. You're selling me. You're selling me so hard. <laughs> what can I say? I'm a natural ribbit. I'm just... It's just who I am. Well then, uh, pray tell, uh, tie your tongue around this box and... Let's try to hoist it up this rope. Let's... Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> and I wrap it around that one handle. And I... Boom. And I'm like, hey, oh my let's god. do this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, He's the right. chosen one. I didn't say he was a smart. Roll me. The, <laughs> roll me um, a strength check to see okay, how goodness. much your tongue can endure. Strength. Um, okay. Endure. What's gonna happen? Go it's going to be a very difficult check. It's a heavy box. 17, 17 with fear. Plus 2 is uh, 19 with fear. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. The DC is 20. Um, so I have 4 prayer dice to add on to this. For... You want to spend them? I'm, that... I feel like I will either... <laughs> Lose my tongue, and I will be no longer You'll worthy be of being ultimately a silent. I was going to tell us silent, yeah. 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 If that isn't silent. a sign from your god. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, gosh. I want to I wanna get up there, and I want to prove to 
to my my party that the tongue is 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 a powerful thing, and I'm gonna I'll spend the four and I'll <laughs> I'll go up there with with twenty three with fear. All right, um, the <laughs> tongue is mightier than the sword. You uh, <laughs> as we all look on me... and do nothing to help. Nothing at all. <laughs> just like ugh. me with my grappling <laughs> hook and like no nothing. <laughs> yeah, <you do laughs> like that. nothing. Um, He's got a grappling hook. I'm just like a beefy boy, and we're just like looking at him, just with that. <laughs> well, you start, well, you start I'll start be damned. Up the rope, your your hind legs higher, and your your front legs pushing yourself up. Your tongue out, <laughs> and it starts to stretch. <laughs> and and eventually it gets like really tight you can feel it like tugging in the back of your throat and and finally as you're pushing up it lifts off the ground mm-hmm. you have fully supported the entire weight of this heavy heavy package that's good now that's good. Me... <laughs> um yeah now, um, roll an athletics check, uh, sorry, uh, a agility check to see if you can make it up this rope. I look at the other two, I'm like, uh, you know, how far up has he gone so far? Like, a foot? I imagine, like, he's pretty far up, but the chest yeah. is, like, yeah, a foot off the ground, and his tongue is just <laughs> the entire distance. I'm like, well, I'll be damned. Yeah. You make it, you make it, like, a good... 15 feet up before like the the package finally lifts off the ground and you're going backwards it's hard your foot gets misplaced and it, it ends up like sticking on but your other limbs start dangling off and as you're dangling the the, the package starts swinging do you reckon we should maybe help I want to jump in. I want to just like support the, the the package with my with my hands I just want to like run in and just kind of like Okay, I okay, got you. okay. I, I got you, T- Tungy Boy. I got you. All right. <laughs> can I also add... The fact that lift it up. Can I also add some... Uh, I have some soft rope. I don't know if that I can uh, tie it around a little bit and, and shoot up alongside him in parallel. Sure, yeah. Okay, roll me an athletics check and... Oh, sorry, a agility check. And uh, it's a DC 13. Um, if you can shimmy up alongside him with that rope and, and, and help. I kind of just want to also, like... Poke his tongue. What what does Burblug's tongue feel like at the same time? <laughs> it is, it's it is a totally new sensation to you. This is a not only you you felt your tongue every now and then. you've touched your tongue with your hand when you were a kid and sometimes it's like oh did I bite myself? You felt what your tongue feels like. This is this is immaculate. This is a smooth. But right now it's a little taut. It's kind of like a. It's kind of like a laffy taffy right now, where it's kind of kind of taut because of the the chest. But usually it's soft and it's moist and it is very smooth. But like has a little bit of stick to it because uh, I am a ribbit. I do catch things with my tongue. But it is it is it is the tongue of tongues. Ribbit's tongues are just so beautiful. magical. Tongue of magical tongues. Tongue. tongue of tongues. Okay. Um. All right. Uh, so the what's the total there? Okay. Do you add any? Uh, it's agility. Do you have any bonus there? I already added. Oh, okay. Uh, unfortunately, thirteen is the number. Um, I will let you succeed if you take a stress. Uh, and yes, sure. Yeah. Okay. Can I do anything with hope? Because I have half five. Um. No, it spills over. If you get six, you you lose an HP. Oh no! I'm just joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I, don't know. <laughs> I was genuinely like, confused there for a second. Like, wait a minute. No, no, you can only max out of five. Uh, you can use a hope to 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 spend an experience. Um, yeah. No, and otherwise, it's, it's like, yeah. So uh, I took one stress. Okay, awesome. You guys make your way up. Uh, you uh, you tie a rope around the uh, the package and. Pull up alongside Burblug, and the two of you have managed to pull this this package all the way up and around and lower yourselves onto a platform uh, that this this floating house uh, has, like a 
kind of like a balcony. Um, as you land, uh, you guys uh, hear some bustling inside, and uh, the doors creak open. You see a tall mix of a humanoid and a firefly. Uh, it's an elderly combination of both of those, and uh, it moves with slow, jerky movements. Um, and she has eyes that look like they've um, kind of been like coated with white. Um, and she has a glowing uh, bottom, I guess, that extends out past her legs. And she hovers in the air with her wings. Who are you? Oh. What are you doing here? Oh, God. Oh, that thing's... That thing's heavy. Yeah. One second. Yeah. Y young Rivet. Is your tongue supposed to be... <laughs> I kind of release the box and it kind of comes back. But now it's kind of like uh, like Jar Jar when his yeah you can't you can't talk for the next like five, five seconds. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, this this package. You you're the ones that uh, uh, King Emmons yeah. sent. Yes, yes, yes. You're rather oh, late. We're the delivery boys. Late. Come on, hey, hold on, hold on. <laughs> there was no set timeline. Wait a second. When were we supposed to be come here? Man, come in. <laughs> Wait, is this just the two of you? Oh, no, no, there's two others. They're, oh, they're coming up. Oh, oh. Uh, she peeks over. Are you guys climbing the rope, or what are you guys doing? I'll, I'll slowly attempt to, to climb the rope. Down's not exactly, okay. like, you know athletic in that sense <laughs> he's not really he, he you, definitely you, failed like the rope climbs in gym class she she, she hollers from up above there <laughs> oh yeah you, you, you head down and i'll come get you and uh you gotta like space their hand there's like a glow and the rope begins to extend and drop lower the house down to the ground <laughs> I'm, i think it's lady! much easier for me <laughs> lady you need like a, a doorbell from downstairs says, ah, so we can do that and you do that and we don't have to no, no no nonsense I don't like to be disturbed besides looks like you made your way up no problem anyway really hurt yeah, drink this. She she hands you this like slimy drink. I kind of I like hold my tongue uh, <laughs> to kind of create like a a slide down my throat because it's all loose. <laughs> I drink like super thick, probably poison. <laughs> you didn't you didn't investigate it. You didn't smell it. You didn't touch it. You just <laughs> down it. Yeah, you're dead. Uh, do you want to do Blaze of Glory or what? <laughs> always, always Blaze of Glory. <laughs> okay. Um, Dallin just walks guys... up the stairs and into it. He's, he's there now. <laughs> okay. And she she raises her hands back again, again. It uh, starts to to rise, and the house actually begins to like split and open up, like it's like the petals of a flower as it's dangling up into the air. Uh, she grabs the package, uh, <clears throat> turns it over so she can investigate. Mm -hmm. Seems... Okay. Okay. She mutters to herself. She taps it a series of times and the locks spring open. <clears throat> Opens the lid and inside it is a massive lion-faced stone. It is like a rock. Um, and Dallin and potentially Wrath, uh, you guys would recognize this as it's the keystone to the capital city's main archway. 
As soon as she opens it, she starts nodding. Oh, of course the king would want to keep this delivery secret. Nobody wants... If, if you uh, find out the city's unwarded, the, it would be overtaken before the night falls. So, glad it's here. Seems like the, the magic in it's faded. Uh, we'll have to travel Jordan. to Open Vale. Sorry. Oh, it's because Jor Jordan, I, she, she mentioned something about magic. I is concerns me. I don't know anything about magic. I'm, I, I trust, I hope you... She says the city's not warded. Right. As presumably, the stone has some sort of defensive... I doubt I would know, like, the capital's defense specifically, but would I know much about wards in general from, uh, not really Bard College, but uh, the mentor, Bimmy Jeffett, was obviously a well-traveled person. Had he heard and would he have imparted much knowledge about, to me about wards in general and, like, what they could do on such a scale? Yeah, so I think you're probably aware, just, I think almost anybody that has some magical training is probably aware right. of the basics of, of wards. So, um, most large cities uh established villages uh, will have some sort of warding uh, and you recall as you walked into hush there was that bubble pop uh, and right. that was similar similar magic to this one uh in the the capital city but obviously the capital has much more advanced and strong wards to protect the city and then what i know like um the basic threat level of like without this ward what could happen is it like attack on titan situation where there's just going to be a whole bunch of enemies all of a sudden that could easily enter the city it's like they have no walls or is it just that only like magical stuff can now easily get through uh right yeah it, it it's can be a combination of both um so yeah it protects against uh sort of like powerful magics from being used uh, on the city, uh, as well as uh, will keep away more dangerous beasts and monsters. I will um, lay that information, obviously, and say, well, yeah, it makes sense that uh, King didn't want it, and for everybody to know it, like she said. Uh, surprising, he's doing a nice thing, though. Are you going to recharge it there, uh, ma'am? Is that what uh, the situation is? Of course, we have to recharge it as soon as possible. This, this, this stone needs to be restored. The capital city to be safe. How do we do that? We we'll have to travel to Open Vale. It's not too far from here. If you're willing, I think we should head out immediately. Sure, sure. I. Will require your aid. This is not something I can do by myself. Yeah, sure. We're here. Yeah, might as well. Very well. Might let's well. let's go. Uh, it looks like you've got your wagon there. Let's head back down, and pack some things, prepare myself, and and we'll head off. Sure. 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 A few moments later, you guys are back on the carriage, and you are headed towards um, Open Vale, uh, as uh, the Arcanist describes it. Uh, as you're traveling, she informs you that uh, as she begins the rituals to restore the magic within this keystone, uh, it is um, it will attract all manner of dangerous entities within the vicinity. Uh, so you will need to protect her while she completes the ritual. All right. Can do. Understood. What, what kind of okay. what threats are we looking? What what should we expect here? Um, it it really depends on the season. Um, last time I did it, uh, it was winter, so it's quite different, but I don't really want to talk about that. 
didn't go so well. It was just fine, but it will be fine this time. Where you look like strong, buff, yeah. I kind of flex. Oh <laughs> yes, very convincing. <laughs> convincing. <laughs> I can, it's, it's the first time that's ever been said to me. <laughs> As you guys continue, um, your carriage pulls through. I realized I didn't even show you guys the 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 woods uh, page, but anyway, uh, uh, this is a rather large map. Can you guys see the carriage there? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna place you guys here. Um, eventually, uh, you guys uh, exit as you exit the village. Uh, there, you once more enter the sable wood, where the trees are become rather thick. Uh, you travel like that for a while until you un enter a large clearing, and it's a perfect circle it's quite wide um it's just it's grass that is like uh it has like pure grass like there's no uh nothing no flowers no other shrubbery no nothing else and it's just like pure grass flat for you know uh 200 feet in this large circle uh, there are stones that crop up here and there around, um, and there are some that look like they're arranged in a more like um, a purposeful uh, configuration. But uh, the the entire place is is filled with a light fog. Um, as you enter, uh, her in kind of pop up. And she kind of like directs over to a certain area. Yes, uh, yes, good, good, good. Uh, stop, stop here, and uh, come help, help me, help me out, lift this. I'm, I'm, I'm old. You with the convincing muscles, bring it down. <laughs> no problem. I kind of roll my shoulders a little bit, and I step down. And I just, I, I, I like make absolutely no show of lifting it at, at all. I just kind of pick it up and just. Easy peasy. Let's go. Where are we going? <laughs> okay. Um, so you guys uh, get it off the package, uh, off the uh, carriage, and uh, she uh, she picks it up. Uh, sorry, she uh, starts handling it and says, Now, <clears throat> I'll need one hour to prepare this. So I will... Uh, I will be a little distracted during this time and throughout the ritual. So prepare yourselves now and know that bad things are coming. So watch out. Yes, but what bad things how? Are we talking? Shh, I'm, I'm busy. Ritual. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <Hello. laughs> I walk over to Dallin. Like, did you tell anyone in the coin that you were coming here? No, I wouldn't have told anyone. The city's left unguarded. It is. Might not fare well. We Might have to not. do this quickly. We do. Also, she's a little rude, isn't she? A bit, a bit rude, a bit weird. That's that's fair. But she likes I feel, my I feel like it's so. a simple question. What kind of threats are we to expect? She's busy. Oh God. So she's fine. And I'll, I'll, so these rocks around here, um, how big are they? Uh, so these are five foot increments. So, uh, you know, this one's like 15 feet across, across by 10. How tall? Um, it's tall, I think. Oh, tall. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, however tall you want to be. <laughs> Do you want to have a certain height? <laughs> I would like to hide. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it can be a tall, mm -hmm. a tall rock. You want to hide that. on top of it or behind it? Behind it. Okay. All right. Um, you guys, as she's doing this, you have the opportunity to take a short rest, should you choose. 
Sure. What can we um, do with a short rest again? I know there's so you options. can choose two options. Um, you can you can heal a D4 hit points. You can, you can fix heal your shirt. a D4 stress. Ah, yes. You can repair your armor to clear two armor slots. Uh, or you can prepare with somebody, or uh, prepare and get hope. Okay. So given that I used to be a tailor, or tailor's apprentice, or whatever, uh, can I like take out some stuff and help him mend this shirt? Oh yeah, no problem. Appreciate that, yeah. I will uh, mend my armor and... I've got to mend my, uh... some health points. <laughs> <'Cause>, uh... <laughs> Men... <laughs> good, good luck with that one. Yeah, jeez, <laughs> I hope. Come on, yeah. come on, give me a two. And before, ooh, okay, yeah, three. Okay. three. There you oh. go. I'm back. It's like a cart never fell on you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> your legs and your tongue are just uh, back to normal. I'm also my gonna. My body has healed, but my heart still hurts. <laughs> At least you can walk. That's true. I'm going to take back my two daggers instead of the grappling hook. I'm going to, uh, as we're short resting, do a thing unrelated to short rest, but I'm going to cast Tava's Armor, which says that I can spend a hope to give a target I can touch uh, 1d6 to their armor score the next time they spend an armor slot. And I can't stack it multiple times on one target, but it doesn't say I can't have it going on multiple targets at once. So I'm just going to run around the group and like give everybody a high five. It's like, all right, guys, we got this. Let's go. Come on. We're, we're getting ready. We're going to do great. Nice. And, there's uh, no uh, spend... limit. There's no limit yet, at least. So I'm just going to spend the four hope that I have. And everybody's nice. first hit, they'll get to add a D6 to whatever they would take. That's like a right, solid hope. hope. Awesome. That's... That's really good. That's <laughs> yeah. No, um, yeah. Julio, yep. if you've got a ton of hope and you know what to do, you can also apply hope to attack rolls if you want to. Uh, to increase it by one for per hope is to that uh, to use your experience. You can use experience for attack rolls as well. Okay. Oh, oh my gosh. if you've got something that well, helps there. Yeah. Experience Unfortunately, short. unless I'm attacking with needles or something or thread or something mm. do you have a thief uh, yeah experience i'd count that if you i mean thieves I'll, sure I'll typically are daggery i'll take it <laughs> does anybody need more hope like or is everybody like maxed out at I five three. at five i have oh, yeah i can spend a oh, purple how are you doing for hope as well uh, I've got three. Three? All right. Yeah. I will spend two stress to do a different thing, which is inspirational words. Uh, I can mark a stress and recite inspirational words. And then you can choose an option from the list below. One of them is gain a hope. So I'll just spend two stress and you can both pick up an extra hope as well, just so we have a bunch to go around. Inspirational words will still just be more prep talk of like we can come on we can get this we got a little roughed up in the first fight but whatever's coming this time we're ready for it let's just we'll take it out it's fine thank you and that'll be that pick i'll take it i'm just gonna be honing my blade i'm not doing anything that can benefit anyone because i can't do anything <laughs> that'll benefit anyone so i'll just i'll just be like you know flexing my muscles and just like honing my blade okay has everyone chosen chosen their two options for the short rest? Yep. Oh, I just... yeah, it was okay. Yeah. Hold on, I got one more. Option. I'll repair armor. I can do it. All right. At this point, the arcanist lets out a shrill cry. The keystone has finally responded. Quickly, surround me. The ritual must begin, or I'll lose the pathway. Hurry! And her whole body begins to glow, starting from her uh, butt. <laughs> what's the appropriate term? What's the, what's the, what's the uh, thorax? Thorax. No. Or... The thorax. I think anyway. it is. I wasn't sure if that was the middle or not. Anyway. Google the firefly The firefly now. butt part goes all the way up. <laughs> that's, the, that's the real uh, scientific term. And she uh, begins to glow... And she 
lifts the stone off the ground and they start hovering up into the air 10 feet. Um, as she does, there is a unearthly cry that begins echoing through the woods. Dallin, was that you? I realized I had the tavern music on the whole time. Whoops. Uh, All right. It was not me. You feel the ground begin to rumble as the earth splits, and you see four skeletons begin clawing their ways out, reaching in and pulling out some ancient, decrepit weapons that they had buried with them. Let me pull them up on the map. Those aren't mountain lions. <laughs> and then, off coming through the forest, you feel this dark presence begin to approach from either side. You see these forest wraiths begin to drift closer to the group, still a ways out. But you can feel a malevolence and a darkness in their glowing eyes. Now, uh, you guys are prepared for this, uh, so I will let you act first. Can I just, I just want to just charge forward and attack this guy right here. Just take out my sword first and just start going to town. If <laughs> Go for it. Uh, D12 plus strength. Uh, 22 with hope. Nice. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely, wow. definitely a hit. Uh, let's do 1d8. So I do five uh, points of physical damage to it, but I think there's... Hey. Yeah, five points of physical damage. Um, on a roll, so... Before, one of the things I I have an ability called Call, Call of the Slayer, which instead of taking a hope, I was able to store one of my 1d6s, uh, one of them as a 1d6 that I can add to a damage roll when I, yeah, that I can add to a damage roll. So I'm going to do that if that's cool. Yep. 1d6. So that's an additional one. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> All right. Super worth that, that one damage. That just charge forward, sword in hand, just not even thinking, just like hacking away which is probably why i just have such an absolute terrible role but uh yeah i'm mostly deeply concerned about these undead creatures that have just jumped up in front of us yeah you you charge forward and you you slash into it um it it like shatters a bunch of the ribs and stumbles back uh it looks like it's taken a pretty serious blow but it continues forward um uh now, I forgot there is a timer. Um, so we've got this timer here. It is currently at eight. I'm just going to set this here. And uh, every time you kill a enemy, it's going to drop down one uh, for the ritual to complete. Any time the Arcanist is hit, it is going to increase. Okay. okay. All right. all right. So you all with hope. Uh, that is continuing your turn. Um, okay. You said that there was a wraith here, like somewhere over there. Uh, there yes, was... there's a wraith down there as well. There, there was not. There before, yeah. Oh, I think I undid that. Oops. Not that oh. bad. Yes, it is down here. There you go. All right, and each one of these is like. Ten or five feet, then it's a five foot. Yeah. So this is this Whoa. is a um, 
that's a far distance. So if you go all the way there, that's going to be uh, in action to, to get around there. I want to move just within 30 feet. So I think about okay. there should do. Okay. And I would like to use my axe, but use my spirit weapon, uh, divine wielder feet, where when you have a melee weapon equipped, uh, make him fly from your hand to strike an enemy and return to you. Treat it as though it is a weapon with uh, close range. So that would be um, the Wraith. But also mark a stress to also apply this attack to another target in range on the same attack roll. Nice. So I'm going to like get nice. my axe and kind of, uh, I'll be like, uh, uh, may the silence of death greet you kindly and i'm gonna my axe is gonna glow and then my usual green skin is gonna start to turn like poison dart yellow uh like <laughs> golden and i'm gonna whip my axe and hopefully hit both of these targets uh with that feat okay so i'm gonna make my attack roll this plus strength Oh wow wow with hope dang and dang, gonna, okay and I believe it's a d10 my axe I gotta pull it up gotta bounce back and forth yeah one d10 so that's 21 plus my strength right so yep. that would be 23 and then it's a one d10 plus the two from the attack the spirit weapon oh nine nice. plus two eleven i'll mark a stress for that so okay. they both take eleven yes yeah Dang. all right you grab your axe it starts flying through the air with this holy energy and it just slices right through the skeleton it just bursts apart and continues on through to the wraith. Um, now, tell me, what type of damage does this deal? Is this magical or physical? Magical. Yeah. Awesome. Now, it so the it looks like the uh, magical energy as it pierces through the wraith, it gives like a rah! and uh, it flashes through and you comes back, you catch it. Uh, the wraith Takes two points of damage for that. Yes. Nicely done. All right, all right. Sick. This is the sound oh, of silence! I have HP, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dead, dead. Sc screaming, this is the sound of silence. <laughs> Dang. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so I, uh, I'm going to reduce this. Reduce this down. Okay. Uh, it's your turn. Your guys' turn still. Well, I will jump on to helping that, and I'll sort of... If it's range far from uh, where the ritual's happening, I think I can still reach it. Because I have uh, my walking stick. I'll push it up into my hand so I can actually like cast from the top of it, as it is actually a scepter, which is apparently a magical weapon akin to a wand. Uh, it has a range of far, and I can attack just with presence with it. So I will essentially put the ukulele away really quickly, grab the scepter, and shoot out a blast of, I would assume it would be some sort of, like, coastal sea breeze magic weather sort of thing that just <laughs> shoots out and hits, because I don't know what exactly the base magic is. But, uh, <laughs> it is the spray of Sarsaparilla. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you s spray salt right in his eyes. Salt water, huh? Yeah. Uh, Alright, so this is going to be duality die plus two. So two, uh, two D12. Slash. Let me get the plus two in there. Ooh. Oh, wait, okay. So hey. that's going to be yeah, 20 with fear. 
But that is, uh, I think if I've counted correctly, the seventh fear roll of the game. I might be off a bit. But either way, that means that uh, oh, the bard okay. rally feature goes off. So everybody just gets a d6 that is basically bardic inspiration. Uh, and you can use that d6 on any action roll, reaction roll, or damage roll. Uh, that is once okay. per session. Or so damage. Just... Or oh, damage, yeah. We have a... We had a plus six, didn't we? You get the plus or... six from the armor slot, because that was the spell that I cast. Yeah, and yeah. then this is another plus six to wow. Bang. any sort of thing. I just full support. You guys go nuts. Do whatever you want. Bard support's um, good. There's a lot of bard support in here that's actually really it's neat good, to see. Yeah. But yeah. I, I, um, I love the DM's face when you're like, I think this is a seventh fear. He's like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> If you're yeah. counting it, I believe you. I was trying my best because apparently That's for awesome. my class that matters. But yeah. Um, other than that, yeah, twenty with fear to hit him. Yep, sure. Yeah. Sorry, Perfect. which one? Uh, the wraith <laughs> specifically. The wraith is what I was targeting with the scepter. Uh, there's two, two wraiths. There's one. Oh, more sorry, the wraith that has been hit, the one that's down south. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Roll Perfect. your damage. I'm going over to Demi playing this cool. All right. D8 and it has plus two uh, as well uh, on the base. So oh, four. four. Big four damage. Big four. Okay. I could. Uh, I, actually, I'll just immediately throw my bardic inspiration into that as well. Why not? So okay. D6 as well. Hey. Oh. Hey, up to 10. Ten. Dang. Okay. 10 is actually its major threshold. So that's two points. Perfect. Nice. Sick. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, that's the end of your turn. I'm guessing there's nothing else to do. That's yeah, I got nothing. Uh, this wraith is looking unhappy. Uh, it is oh. going to, uh, um, Let's see. Yeah, yeah. It's going to come a little bit closer, uh, and it is going to stare directly at uh, Burblug. Uh, and you feel like these eyes digging into you. Um, it is going to roll against you. Oh, sorry. Not that one. Did that work? No. I haven't seen it yet. Oh. Yeah. That is a uh, 10. Oh. Oh, there you yeah, go. I'll take, I'll take the first one. Uh, geez, that took a while. 10 to attack. Uh, does that hit you? Your evasion? It does hit me, yep. Okay. This wraith, as it's staring at you, you feel like this, this strange urge to lock eyes with it and you can't look away. And it begins to immediately fly up towards you. And as it does, it slows down and places this cold, ice-cold hand on your cheek. <laughs> and as you do, uh, you take eight magic damage. Eight magic damage, okay. Okay, I'll, and, I'll, I'll, um, I'll eat that. And you are forced to relive in your mind a terrible memory from your childhood. Um, but everything in it is haunted and twisted can you describe something quick for me oh um takes me back to the family reunion with gerald and he uh i i i won one tongue wrestling competition against him but in this now twisted version of it he not only beat me but he cut my tongue off oh, <laughs> and God. i can't I like all I taste is blood, and all I see is is fear and darkness. As I've lost my my ribbit hood. <laughs> Your ribbit hood. <laughs> Your ribbit hood. Oh. Uh, uh, That's gosh. gonna go on a shirt. My ribbit hood. <laughs> yeah. There we my go. Okay, uh, you are vulnerable now until your next rest oh okay. um you are you are like haunted like you, you pull your tongue out just to, like feel it's there and your body's kind of like shaking 
Uh, vulnerable means any roll against you has advantage. Um, you can attempt to shake off these conditions. Um, you would roll an action roll to, to attempt to remove it. Otherwise, it comes off automatically on your next rest. OK. Um, the other one uh, is going to do a similar thing to Dallin. Uh, you are. That's going to be a 21 to hit. Oh, yeah. And again, you feel like this. You're, you're looking at the skeleton, and you just, your eyes are just drawn towards it. And it locks gaze with you and flies in close, places this ice cold hand on your bald head. And uh, you take 16 magic damage. And you are vulnerable again until your next rest. 16. I'm. That would be three. Yeah, I'm going to burn an armor slot for this. So I'm going to burn an armor. Um, so I reduce it by nine, so it goes to seven. And then, you know what? I'll use my uh, Bardic Inspiration thing. It's a D6 for the uh, armor thing? Or is it just D... a flat six? Uh, it's a D6 for the Tava's armor spell, and that just automatically gets used up when you use your next armor slot. So, okay, like the so it just gets used up right away. So it's an extra yeah. D6. And then you can save Bardic Inspiration, yeah, for later. Yeah. So I'll use the armor one so I can reduce my four. That goes down to my minor threshold because that takes it down to three damage. Uh, actually, no, that goes down to my stress. I don't I don't even take a minor damage from that. So nine, yeah. Nice. Yeah, because nine plus four is 13. It was 16. Yeah, there's that to three. So I just take a stress from that. I will, I'm good with that. And I will mark an armor slot off as well. Sick. And you're also vulnerable until the next rest. Can you give me a quick, quick idea of what you're flashing through your mind in this memory? I just get immediate haunting memories of all of the, the 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 people that I, uh, in, we'll say interrogated, a little bit aggressively, um, and, and it just kind of flows through his mind, and he's just kind of like hard blinking, just kind of struggling with the, those thoughts and those memories and trying, knowing that he's trying to, to move past it and it's like coming right back and pulling him back kind of into those emotional states. Okay. Awesome. I mean, kind of. <laughs> Narratively pretty um, <laughs> So, your rogue ability of hiding, this, if you're hidden... Nobody can see you, even if they're in line of sight. Is that correct? correct. Once yeah. you hit it, as far as I, I okay. gather from reading it. All right, these skeletons, I guess, don't know you're there. Um, so I am going to spend a fear to gain some action points. I need some more actions, and I am also going to spend a fear to activate this encounters. Fear effect, which is Ooh. skeletons coming, rising up. More? Again, from the ground. Wow. More two, more skeletons. Boof. Okay. Boof. Rise from the ground. And I have two more actions. Uh, I am going to spend an action to move uh, this one uh, into melee with Dallin, and then I am going to spend one more action to attack with one of these new skeletons. Uh, it is going up against Burblug. And Burblug, you are uh, vulnerable, so it has advantage, so that's another uh, d6 onto that. Wow. So that is a uh, 14 to hit with the attack and 13 damage. And then that is it for my turn. So, back okay. to you guys. So now it's back to us. Um, can I. First, I'm playing without initiative. Apparently, I could take two turns in a row. Yep. All right. 
I want to as get... Long, as long as you don't roll with fear on something. I'm not rolling. Does. One of them is just oh. to get to you. Uh, so can I get to Dallin? Yes. So if you're going further than close, so yeah. more than 30 feet, um, you are going to make an agility check to see if you get there before you're interrupted. Oh, so uh, so I, roll I, okay. me, Yeah, roll me an agility roll. So this will basically be like... This will... D decide if you if I... roll, roll with fear, then your turn ends as you're making your way over there. I don't like that. Yeah. Agility? It's a it's a it's a low DC. It's a ten. Okay, so and then I can also add one D six when with the uh, when inspiration. The inspiration is pretty much anything: action, roll, reaction, or damage. So if you want to use it to like make sure you get there, then yeah. I mean, do, do I see the result of my dice before I use it, or? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Let me. Uh, it's when this roll we'll add it to the result of any. It just says add it to the result. So yeah, you can uh, wait until after you've seen it. Sounds good to me. And okay. it's a, a twelve with hope. Whoa. All right, take your hope and and I'll take an action card. And you have successfully made it over. All right. Uh, is everything right now close? Yes. Okay, I'm going to use one of my abilities called Rain of Blades. I spend Ooh. two hope to conjure throwing blades that strike any enemies close to you. I have to make a spell okay. cast roll. Nice. All right, so it's one attack, and it hits everybody in one damage. 1d10. Does that include Dallin? Oh, sorry. Uh, no. It says enemies, I think. Enemies, yeah. Enemies, That's okay. Five. Okay. Enemies instead of group. So spell cast roll is going to be the same as a melee, I'm assuming? Uh, yes. It, it, does it give you an ability for that? Is that crit. a crit? Crit! That's a crit. <laughs> Woo! All right. Nice. Was oh, so, that double that damage, crit. too? Ooh. That is double damage, too. Oh, my God. This is gonna be rough. Oh. So it's 1d10. So we're starting at 10. Starting at 10. <laughs> yeah. And then okay. I roll another d10. If you add in your Bardic Inspiration, that'll be another 6 plus D6 on that. And yeah. this is the same damage to and all AOE. four creatures? I don't know if it's worth it, because the max you can get is 3, but, you know, it's all up to you. I mean, if you have a good D10 roll. I'm taking it all. Let's go. <laughs> Alright. Let's go. Oh my, that... Wow. Uh... Did you have a, you have a plus something, or is it just that? Is that it? No, that's it. So, five, okay. so 15. That's yep. 21. That, good thing you added it. The severe threshold for this wraith is 20. Ho oh, oh. Nice. Nice. Okay, wow. Yeah, I mean, you... It's all magic damage. Just describe Oof. this to me, because uh, you, you're going to kill all these skeletons and severely damage this wraith. <laughs> okay, so... Uh... I peek over the rock and see that Dallin is uh, being surrounded. And uh, he seems out of it. He seems to be, you know, I, I see some sort of fear keep passing through his eyes. He's blinking a lot. And I just hop over the rock, slide down the side of it, go at a charge. And as I'm running, I, I, these are, I start conjuring some conjuring. And as I land, I hop land right next to him in a like in a you know defensive stance and just let loose the the magical knives at them awesome yeah yeah it's a whirlwind of blades that uh just just destroy these skeletons just slice them to bits their their bones are blasted apart in all directions uh this wraith you feel it you see these like just holes in its body that just can't reform. It's just floating there with these holes now. I purposefully uh, have one of the blades slice past Dallin's ear. Just so that he knows that it was me that was there. To let him know how close he came to death. But I came in and saved the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright. Wow. Uh, so, you did you clear stress as well, as with your help? From that crit? 
I had not, no, but I will. All right, and then it is your guys' turn still. I mean, inspired by that, I'm just going to take out my sword and just try and cut this wraith if I can. Like, just okay. immediately. Like, uh... That is an 18 with hope. Okay, that is a hit. Sick in the face. All right, let's just go for some... I can't do anything that exciting, so I'm just going to go ahead and... Roll some damage. So it's a D8 plus two, D8 plus one. Uh, and I'm going to use the, uh, I'll probably add Bardic Inspiration dice on this. Yeah, that's five. I'll add a D6 for the Inspiration. So nine. So nine total. Um, and... yeah, that is passes minor under its major. And so that'll be one HP kind of expected but and i'm gonna stand there after like cutting and just kind of like staring at it kind of like recognizing the the affliction that it put on me and just kind of like like almost in almost in a <laughs> in a rage if if you will but uh <laughs> just kind of staring him down that's all i got all right um okay i i think i have to interrupt your movements <laughs> so i'm gonna spend two fear so that i get a turn and uh and i gotta go for it um oh shoot geez i don't have enough fear um okay i'm going to uh do use a fear to summon two more skeletons please tell me your group attack is once per short rest or something nope Ah, dang it. <laughs> it's too hope. Okay. Too um, hope. And then... Too hope, is it? <laughs> uh, it is going to memory delve onto you, uh, Ruth. So that will be... A four to attack. Yikes. Are you, who are you attacking? Me? Yeah, Ralph. Uh, my evasion is twelve. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You you feel these eyes lock onto, and you you kind of look. You get pulled over, but you you resist. You look down and avoid this this pull of the gaze. Um. Okay. And then these the skeleton is going to come up and attack uh, Dallin with advantage. Uh, that is. Five to hit, but I'm adding a D6 because he has advantage. Oh. That was so really cool. 11 to hit. On that that 11, 11 does hit, yeah. Oh, uh, that's 17 damage. Okay. Cool. Uh, I'll spend an armor to reduce it to 8, and that's my, my, my minor. Yeah, that's going to be my minor, so I take right. one hit point. But uh, what I will do... Um, I have an ability called Retaliation. When a creature hits me with uh, a melee attack, I can mark a stress to, uh, to to immediately deal weapon damage. I don't even need to roll to hit. I just deal weapon damage to them. Oh, nice. Okay, nice. roll that. So 1d8 plus 1. Uh, so 5. These rolls are not very good, but I'll take it. Uh, that's uh, 1 damage. Take it. Okay. Awesome. And that's all I can do. Please roll some more fear and let's get it going. <laughs> I'm going to I could shake off the vulnerability you said, like it's a roll. Uh, that'll be a that would be an action. Yeah. So I'll an action? That's you fine. You can tell me what kind of thing you would want to do and I'll set a DC. Um So I want to use my order born uh dedications so um so it's with dedicated it's record three sayings or values your upbringing instilled in you once per short rest when you describe how you're embodying one of these principles through your current action you may roll a d20 as your hope die instead of a d12 and so i kind of want to to shake it off i want to try and like like I'm, I'm watching like 
this horrific scene of my tongue being cut off and everything just being like dark and sadness. I want to try and reach out to the great silence and have like have like his light break through this darkness as I call upon him using one of the dedications. Hold on, I wrote three of them. What did I say? Which one would fit best? Um, as as the stars guide the night, so shall the wisdom of the great silence guide your heart. And I'm kind of like, just have that resonate, resonate. And I'm like, well, like, because I'm in the dream, I'm like, with no tongue. Silence, <laughs> help me. <laughs> You guys aren't stuck. You're not stuck in the dream. You just recall it, and now you're you're back here. But it's kind of like haunting you. It's so real that it feels like I don't have a tongue. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. No one, Too no one real. could experience that that tongue hood being chopped off. And... The tongue hood. <laughs> um, okay, so I would say probably roll a present. Or an instinct, whatever you think would be better. Uh, I think so, an instinct. Let me take a look. Uh, they're both plus one, so either one. All right. Um, so a d20 as my hope die. I'll roll. I'll have this DC and... be twelve. Okay. Uh, hold on. One d20. I want d20. The D12 roll? Yeah. 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 So, oh, not my gosh. well. That's disgusting. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, the DC was 12. Thanks. I did. Uh, I did not make it. Yeah. Okay. Well, seven. There goes that. <laughs> With fear. With fear. And All right. Back to your turn. And I wasted that beautiful dedication. <laughs> This wraith is going to back off, and it is going to attempt a, a life drain on uh, Raph. Uh, he is not happy. Having Neither am I. Body sliced open. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a 23 for 8 magic damage. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's all I've got. Back to you guys. Well, why'd he leave? I didn't want him to leave. I He's, wanted uh, him to he stay. Got, he got a bunch of magic knives stuck through him. He's not... Uh, <laughs> yeah. He doesn't want to stick around. Uh, I'm going to sneak attack the one that's uh, attacking us here. And I get advantage because there's one of my uh, party members is in melee range. You get advantage on the attack. Well, I do. Well, for sneak attack Dang. purposes. Awesome. Wait. Go for it. No, I just get sneak attack. I don't get advantage, sorry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 14 with fear. Okay, that is a hit. As a hit, I am going to... So, I usually get 1d8 plus 2. I'm also going to add my sneak attack, which is 1d8. I'm going to expend one hope to add another d8. So, it's going to be 3d8. 3d8. Plus 2. Alright. Sick. Nice. Nice. A 13. Oh, yes. You uh, obliterate this skeleton. Uh, it uh, is just a pile of bones on the ground. <laughs> Rat is just clapping <laughs> everything. <laughs> I know. Holy smokes. Okay. I'm going uh, to I'm gonna run my hands to over over, uh, over to Alan like be like, are you okay? Did they get you? Are you bleeding? I'm okay. Don't worry about me. Alright, let's get the others. Okay. It is... 
this wraith is going to attack the arcanist. Actually, uh, can I, again, in the interest of using the abilities, I have one. If I roll with fear, I can choose to mark a stress instead of giving the GM fear. <laughs> okay. Does that stop me from going? Will you have yes, fear? If you don't if you have fear to spend. Oh no, it's just action tokens, right? Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't I mean, stop. I think it. Right? It doesn't stop my turn. It doesn't stop going to my turn, though. It just doesn't give me a no. fear. Is that right? Yeah. It just, it just stops you from getting fear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you don't have well, you know what? Still, still sucks. So no fear for you. Dang it. Uh, but I want to be fear. I know. I don't want more skeletons. <laughs> uh, okay. Anyway, this one's going to attack the Arcanist. Uh, and let's see, uh, that is a hit. The Arcanist is muttering up in the sky. And you feel like this. Uh, you see this like life force. Some of the uh, the thorax glow is being sucked out of her. Oof. And I'm going to spend a fear to take two more actions. Uh, this skeleton is going to attack with advantage uh, on Burblug. Um, it is just swinging wildly with its sword at you. Uh, that's a 14 to hit and 14 damage. I'll add a d6 to the attack if it doesn't hit you, though. Uh, yeah, 14 hits me because it's my... I only have 7 okay. armor, so... <laughs> 7! Right. Uh, sorry, evasion or armor? Uh, seven, bo 7 for both. Oh, okay, yeah, so 14 to hit you, then 14 damage. And then one is coming at Dallin. That is an 18 to hit and 13 damage. Uh, 18 definitely hits. I burn my third armor slot to make it my minor, so I'll take one more hit point, and I will again use my retaliation feature to deal 1d8 damage to... Is it a melee? Is it... Yeah, it's that skeleton yeah. stacking me? Okay, so I'll yeah. just do a... There's no yeah. limit to this. It doesn't even cost hope. It's just when I get hit. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I do want oh, to man. take my armor slot and my D6 also for the for the Bardic. All right, roll yeah. it. So that, the 7 will bring it down to 7. And if I can get a good number with the D6. Uh, yeah, reduce it. Two. To a 2. Okay. Every bit counts. So that would bring me down to five. So that's my that's just one HP instead of every every ribbit five. counts. Every <laughs> ribbit counts. Uh, and yeah, so I, and I did nine um, with my retaliation ability on the skeleton. That is enough to take it out. Tell me what you do in retaliation. <laughs> just in my absolute fury, just turn around for being hit in the back with the with his, his whatever he's attacking with, and he just wildly swing, just a horizontal blow, just. Slicing him directly in half. Oh yeah, he just thought he the top of the body just like smash to the ground. He's trying to claw away as the as the legs just start walking off in another direction. <laughs> Wrath is so used to fighting with with him that he automatically ducks, knowing that the you know the the, the follow through would have hit him in the head. <laughs> All right, back to you guys. Uh, I need to kill these guys. I'm going to kind of use my axe as a boomerang and like hit both the skeleton and the wraith there. Okay. Come on. Okay, 10 with... Oh. And is there an attack bonus from the bardic? Is it a d6 as well? Uh, the Bardic Inspiration itself uh, is a d6 that you can use on the attack. If you wanted to try and save it for damage, you can. But if you want to use it for an uh, action roll, then I assume an attack is an action like, roll. I feel like I might. I don't I don't remember what the armor thresholds are. The it's uh, 12 right and 13. Okay, so I'm going to roll d6. Nice. Okay, 15. There you go. 15. And I will do my, um, hold on, I forget the exact feature of this, so let's do it Plus two to the attack roll, okay. 
So it's a D10. Plus two, so five magic damage. Oh, plus. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're good. And that would be. So that's one each. Okay. This wraith, yeah, and then there's just blast through them. It's like barely clinging on to its gases form. Um, all right. Next. Um, I got a few things to do, and I think I can do them without a roll quick. Uh, okay. And then I'll have a question about a roll. Uh, so number one, inspirational words. Uh, I'm going to turn to Wrath, and I'm going to say, the, the thing with the shadow knives, do, do that again. That was really cool. Please do it again. <laughs> and I'll just give you a, a hope uh, from the inspirational words. Oh, nice. very inspirational. <laughs> and that just marks stress. No action, no roll, as far as I can tell. Uh, and then I can do another Troubadour song. I have one song left to play today. And that is an epic song during battle. And I can make a target vulnerable by playing that song. So I'm going to take the ukulele back out. And I'm just going to start strumming it very furiously as I look at the uh, wraith that's to the south again, next to Burblug. And I am going to start uh, playing the obvious hit battle song, The Wraith Went Down to Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> just go absolutely nuts on the ukulele uh, and make him vulnerable which that just happens apparently and the last yep. thing I'll do which is a roll is I'm gonna I'm gonna try to cast ice spikes which is the spell cast roll uh, against a target within very far range I can also treat it as a ranged weapon against a target or a group and so now my question is can I do the 5th edition gimmick where like I place it in such a way that I don't hit Burblug. Can I try to get within the range band so that like just the Wraith and the Skeleton get hit and like on the far side so Burblug is out of Yeah, sorry, tell me what the area of effect is again. It just says uh, the area of effect is a target or a group. And a group is, I believe, anything that's very close to each other. Mm. Yeah. If it's very close a... to them... That's a good question. I think that if would... It's, if it's full range bands, it's not the end of the world. I don't have to cast it in the, in the effort to save Burblug some health, but... Um, that is a good I question. Some health is fair. If it happens. Worst case, I can use it against one single target, so I could just try to hit the Wraith as well, if that's easy. I, th I think it's... It's gonna be anybody in close so i guess you choose a target and if they're close anyone close to that target or that range mm. uh so yeah, that's fair that makes I think, sense i guess actually. if you choose i guess like a you could choose a, a square anything close to that square which would be or sorry very anything close very which close. would be 10 feet then yeah, let me broadcast this. but i think like... you're gonna hit burblug yeah, regardless pretty, yeah, I think no matter what, just playing with it. Yeah. So, okay, I won't do the target the group, so the skeleton can live, but I will try to target the wraith. Uh, and that is okay. a spellcast roll. It's two. And which wraith did you target with? Uh, the, the one next to... Uh, the, the one Burblug? next to Burblug as well. Okay. So this will be 2d12, and then I'll add a d6 on afterwards, because uh, he is vulnerable. Nine four with hope, perfect fifteen. Uh, the D six from vulnerable. Yeah, that's two D six. The three, I suppose. So eighteen total to hit the wraith. Oh yeah, for sure. Perfect. And then he takes a single D six of damage uh, from the ice spikes as they jet up through it. I don't think it matters. Uh, you, uh, you. How do you kill this wraith? Do you want to do this? <laughs> I will uh, do what I was probably going to do to Gerald had we not spared his life and, you know, captured him and everything uh, when he ripped my shirt. And I will yeah, plunge the ice spikes up through the ground up towards the wraith. And then once they sort of hit its form, I will then push the ice spikes further so that they shoot out and past the wraith's form okay. and just disperse it into haze. Yeah, they shoot up, 
it's it's just like its eyes linger there for a second until they start to dissolve out into the mist. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. Still your turn. You guys are doing well. Uh, I feel like I need to do this. Um, as a ribbit, I have a long tongue. This is a feature. Oh, God, <laughs> you can you? use your long. It says I'm not making this up. Is what it says. You can use your long, powerful tongue to grab onto things wow. close to you. You may also mark a stress to unleash it as a finesse close weapon and does uh, D12 physical damage. <laughs> this is so one of my sword. My sword is <laughs> it, a D8. Yeah. <laughs> I will take my tongue and in front of this skeleton and I will like like a bolo and try and smack it and uh right like crush its skull kind of a deal. Okay. Um so yeah. Oh, I'm trying to roll it on here. Okay. Boom shaka laka. Ooh, Ooh, crit! Red. Oh With my the god! With the oh. Yes! <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, yeah. oh, my. 1d12 uh, damage. <laughs> double that, plus bad boy, 12. to 16. Plus 0. That's not double, it's better than that. It's 20. It's 12 plus 8. You do the yeah. max high roll, plus the roll. Oh, okay, sick. Tongue best yeah. weapon. Confirmed. Tongue best weapon. Okay. Obliterate. <laughs> yeah, Tongue. you 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 whip your tongue out and it like wraps around him and you pull it back and it just yes. just like spins him apart. Whips out his whip rivet hood. I throws whip it around. Back yeah. and forth. I whip my tongue back and forth. <laughs> okay, and it's still your turn. All right, I'm going to take a running start at the Wraith. Okay. And I'm going to do a slide as I unleash my Reign of Blades again at it. Let's go. All right. Let's see it. That is if you want to crit, if you want a crit again, that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, let's not uh, set Three the before. expectations. Plus two. Oh. oh. It's a hit. It is yeah. with hope. With, with hope. Yeah. You guys, you, you're killing me here. 16 yeah. with hope. And a 1d8. 1d10, sorry. Oh! No! Oh. What? Oh! oh. Oh, that is nice. the exact number <laughs> needed. Yes. Got him. So yeah, uh, running start. Pick a running start, do a slide uh, to the tune of the Wraith went down to Georgia. And <laughs> as, as I finish the slide, I unleash the blades. Okay. You finish what you started with five blade holes right through his head. And it disperses. And with that, the ritual is over. You have successfully defended the Arcanist. Ah, you see them descend to the ground. The keystone is vibrating with arcane energy. And all at once, there's a soundless explosion that erupts from the white fire arcanist dissipating this last lone skeleton and blowing away the mist in this area the clearing is quiet once again you guys return back to her treehouse suspended high up above once again the arcanist looks even older now than she did before, and she speaks with exhaustion in her voice. You fought hard. Not surprised, of course. Hey, look at those muscles. The king keeps good company. I'm very, very glad you were there. It's, it's going to take a little bit more time 
maybe a week or so to allow the magic to to settle make sure nothing cracks or grows into the sentience but in the meantime rest here and you can en enjoy a hot bath i've i've got to settle down for the night and with that back in the arcanist's home you guys have completed your quest you have successfully defended her returned magic to the keystone and hopefully you'll be able to make it back in time to keep the capital city safe and unawares of the lack of warning and that concludes our session awesome mm. well done it was good that was, that was really fun. good was really fun yeah that was, uh, yeah that was great yeah i had i had a blast what what was it like uh, as a player, like I, I could not tell how close you guys were in your HP. Uh, like I had no idea how <laughs> taxing it was or uh, whatnot. I had, I had two hit points I had taken, so I still had four left. Uh, and oh, wow. I had two two of my five stress, but I did you. I had burned through all of my armor, so I used I had no more no more armor points left. I did realize after in classic me fashion that I do also have an ability called Increased Fortitude, where I could spend three hope to just half damage. Oh, so oh. I really should have done that, because like <laughs> I was just sitting at five hope for like the last chunk of the, the battle. So oh, I really dang. I should have done that. I will say, I think I think stress straight up is like my favorite mechanic in this game. Really? Yeah. yeah. Like I think stress is sick. I think it's really cool. I think there's a lot of interesting ways in hearing the different ways that each of you guys were using it with your classes was super cool like i i i'm a huge fan of the way the stress mechanic works i don't know if you guys agree or feel the same but i a hundred percent i I, yeah. I mean you and i have talked about this before and that was the first thing to me when i read the rule set i was like this stress mechanic <laughs> yeah, i love it, it. Yeah. i am living for it this is what i have wanted in 5e for so long and i didn't even know it yeah i i love stress uh i think that's super cool I think the biggest, like, I don't know if it's like a feels bad or if it's just like a weird, it's like the biggest feels bad, man, is the way that the damage thresholds work is a bit awkward sometimes where it's like, if if I'm going to, you know, I roll for, I do seven damage, I don't necessarily know what the damage threshold that I'm attacking against. And I was going to use Alex's inspiration to try and do extra damage. If If I roll a three on that and it doesn't go any higher, I get no. I use the resource and got nothing from it. You know what I mean? If it still yeah. ends up in the same damage threshold, that that's kind of like a ah, that kind of feels a bit bad. You get right? capped out as well at only three hit points. Like you could do infinite yeah. damage. It's not going to matter. You're still only doing three hit points, which is a lot, presumably. But yeah. yeah, that bothers me. That bothers me less than like using a resource to accomplish yeah. nothing. Like to stay within that within the threshold. That doesn't feel great but i mean i don't know you guys what do you guys think i mean there's definitely something to be said about that and i i, I think in the rule set i read something about there's an optional rule where if you do double the upper the max yeah. threshold then you do four you do hp four. yeah um, okay. it's, it's like an optional variant rule or something like that right yeah. but i i could see that being like mandatory rather than just optional yeah i could see that yeah definitely to me, it felt like you guys almost never missed. Did you guys feel like that? Like it felt like the the no. hit rate was very high. <laughs> I I don't know. I Brick had a lot of too. really unlucky rolls. I had like, <clears throat> I feel like, I don't. It, it's really like luck of the roll. And some of us like there were a lot of crits out there. There was a lot of hits, but also, I don't know. I feel like there was a lot of failed rolls. Maybe not with hit rolls, but with like. Trying to get out of the vulnerability uh, condition, or like the different things. Like I had a D twenty as a hope die, and I got a, a three, and three. I just failed with That'd fear. Exact. So I mean, I think it really. I think I don't know. Roll twenty also is also I. Their whole algorithm is interesting because one session I remember playing Curse of Strahd on it, and we're all like critting, and we're all just destroying vampires. But then the next session, we're all like 
failing and we're getting destroyed and like i don't know sometimes it feels a little uneven sometimes but that, i think that just comes down to algorithm and yeah. like luck but um yeah. what was i gonna say i think i what was i gonna say i just completely lost my train of thought someone else if you had someone to say mm. <laughs> so the one thing about yeah, I... this is it, it i i've never played a rogue so this was my first time playing a rogue like character and I liked it. It was fun. Uh, I don't know if it's just that I'm at level one or what, but my options were really limited in terms of what I can pick up when I'm designing the character and also what I can do once my character is created. And I, 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 I don't know if that's the typical experience for rogues. I think a lot of that is level one. You're also coming off playing a level 19 bard in our normal game. So True. I think, yeah, there's like, probably some of that. There's probably some of that. that but I, but <laughs> yes, yes, there is some of that. But also going through like the, the way that you level and what you get when you level, I don't know that I'm going to be getting that much more as I level. I haven't looked into that too much. It does feel a bit more like selective because you have to choose. There's like, there's like yeah. things you have to choose through, right? Yeah. Um, but but a lot what, of those a lot of those options are missing? a lot of those options aren't you pick up more abilities or more skills or something from what I like you know offhand there was a lot of those abilities that were modifying the thresholds or yeah. adding mm -hmm. HP slots or which which are great but in terms of of uh, things I can do I don't know that there were that many so like it makes you well, you, like you draw another bottom. domain card yeah which is okay. yeah. one ability right. That which you may not uh, even yeah, be able not... to equip right away from what I remember. Is it is it that you can hold yeah, it? Yeah, you can five? equip it right away. You so can the hold first five, few yeah. levels, yeah. And then yeah, after the first, five, the you start. Yeah. So, so, but so, that, yeah. that's the thing. So, so it's one ability, maybe two per level? Is that... Which seems yeah. very low compared to most uh, progressions uh, for D&D. For, for &D. I don't know. I feel mm. like uh, it, the maybe you progress more in this one i felt like because yeah. i haven't designed a character so i don't know how the feel is but because you get a domain so that's like a completely new ability every mm. time and you can like you can level up your subclass card so that will like boost your ability or you get like extra damage from your proficiency so i feel like every level you get like multiple meaningful things but i have never i haven't built a character still yet so i don't know how that feels maybe yeah, yeah. like as far as like character designing goes, I really I enjoyed the the I thought the experience thing was really cool. Um, yeah, everyone loves throwing in random like homebrew stuff, and this kind of makes gives you that power to like feel like you're you have some you have you have some creative license to actually fundamentally increase. It's not like a flavor is free kind of thing. It's like a you can actually meaningfully change the scope of your character by incorporating a, a, a meaningful backstory and actually get some additional roles. I think that's pretty cool. Um, I found the stat distribution a bit unexciting to me because we, we, we at our table, we don't use like standard array and we don't use point by we do roles because we love the chaos of rolling for stats. <laughs> and yeah. I'm sure you could obviously just roll for stats and that you can do it. But the fact that it it wasn't even like a an option, I know. I guess you could just do whatever you want. I get that, but like it should be. I kind of feel like there should be some include some method in the text for for rolling for stats, and even if not everyone's going to use it, like we kind of love that chaos. I kind of love that chaos. So for me, it was just like slapping a plus two, plus one, plus one, whatever. It just was like okay, like it it didn't it did that that part of it didn't leave me feeling satisfied. But it's a bit of a, a small you know you know what maybe maybe that's it. what it was for me more than anything else is I, I felt underwhelmed when I was creating the character. I felt like, yes, there were choices, but the choices weren't super varied. Uh, from what I understand, a lot of the choices overlap with all the other classes. You know, the, the items that I had access to were somewhat limited and, and maybe that's just a function of it's a new game and therefore there's just not that much material out yet. Yeah. But I, I, while creating the character, I was a little bit, underwhelmed in terms of my choices mm -hmm. it's played I feel it's played like one. sorry I no, feel like out. when I was creating my character earlier today uh, it was it was easy number one that I thought that was good because yes. I think the whole purpose of like Daggerheart I feel is they want to avoid like the crunchiness that D&D &D yeah. comes with and like I played D&D &D and it's fun but like even 
like even I forget the rules. Even I have to go to the player's handbook or go do a quick Google search when I'm DMing or when I'm playing. Like, okay, how does this work again? Is like, oh, this? But with this, it's like simple. It's like very easy going. And I felt even I think we said this a little earlier that this also this whole system is built in such a way that I felt I didn't even really need the map. Like it was it was useful seeing like visualizing like where we are, but also the way that the players and the DM are both combined together, like building the story, like really building the story together. Like you're engaged, you're there, you're you're building the area in your mind because like you have to describe what this chest looks like or how Gerald, the my cousin, or any of these kinds of things, like you are writing the story. It's not so much left up to the DM who's built this whole story and it infused your backgrounds. Yeah. Now you are forcibly infusing this, like your backgrounds and yourself even to the story. So it kind of like gets to, I thought it was cool. I thought it was yeah. easy to get into. And like, I did, it's not like I like say going from D and D to Pathfinder would be like a catastrophe. It'd be like, holy crap, this is like completely different, even though it uses the same dice and everything. Whereas this, it uses the same dice, but I felt like there was a couple like spot checks with rules and stuff, but like for the most part, we all managed to kind of ease our way into it. I will say that this this was a lot smoother than than I expected. Mm-hmm. And I don't I don't know if it's because we all read the the the, the rules really well beforehand or whatever, but it, it was a lot it. smoother. I, I didn't read it. It was a lot <laughs> smoother than I was expecting. I yeah. was expecting way more stops and be like, oh yeah, right, we have to think about the rules and go back to the 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 the, the manual and be like, what what does the rule say? But I don't feel like we did much of that. And either that's a testament yeah. to the DM <laughs> and ha- having a really good handle on the rules, or the rules are uh, probably a bit simpler and more intuitive. I think a big thing to yeah. what Tim was saying before about the way it almost felt like he didn't need the map. I think something I was really kind of dubious on while reading it was the the way that range works mechanically. But I think that kind of lends itself to that you almost it's are they within close yeah. range? And it's just like it's kind of like this ambiguous thing that yeah, there is like a number to it. But even in, in the rules, it's like ten to thirty, and then there's like a, the far is like a hundred to three hundred. It's it's an insane like range that they give you for it. So it's more just like, are they within range? And it kind of gives you this feeling of like, you can kind of do something without having to worry about whether it's like definitively written in the rules. And it, uh, it kind of gives you that impression of, yeah, you don't even need to look at roll 20 at the time. Like I was more looking at you guys more than I'm just seeing reactions of people mm-hmm. than I was ha- looking at the map. And I thought that was kind of like, that was pretty cool. That's a good point to, to bring up that you mentioned. And honestly, the more I think about it, like I, I definitely agree with that. I don't know about you guys. It, like some tricky points when with the range where it's like because we are constrained by a map, and so it's like oh they're thirty five away. I'm like it's still kind of close ish, so that's fine with me. But then at a certain point, like what is, you know, that cut off? So it's, I think there's like odd stuff, but uh, I think overall I don't mind it. Coming into this, Sorry, did you guys have did anyone did anyone have specific things that they were worried about that they actually got to see in 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 like at play here? Like, I think two things I was worried about. One, no initiative. Um, how that back and forth would go if it if it would feel like the DM's interrupting a whole bunch, or if like, um, yeah, you know, it's like the the players would have a hard time like knowing who like oh no you go or oh you know, I don't know how you guys felt. It felt like you guys all had similar amounts of turns. Um, yeah, I, I, th- I think I think sure. we did. And and there were a few times where I felt like, hmm, okay, so is this where I jump in? Is mm-hmm. this where I jump in? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Do, do I wait and and let other people, you know, do their turn yeah, and then that, jump that's... in? And so and, and I think that was okay in this game in this situation because you know I've only played with you with two of you once, right? And so there's mm-hmm. that 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 line of propi- like of politeness, yes. you know, of like. Yeah, yeah, you go. But I can totally see this on on many tables where people have been playing for years together, where they are not scared to be trampling on each other's boundaries. That that would not happen, and it would it would it would devolve into chaos really fucking really quick. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and, and that that's what I was gonna say. I thought the uh, the the no initiative thing was like weird in a sense that it's like 
I, I don't have extra attack, but I don't need extra attack. I could just take seven attacks in, the, in a row if I wanted to. Yeah. And yeah. like, but does that? I never did it. I took one one per round, but it's still just like I'm not gonna. I, I could have just gone all in on one of the race and just kind of kept. As long as I keep rolling with hope, I'm. I'm you know, it just works out, right? You know what this felt like. And, have you heard of the that? the new companies that that have the, like this new HR policy where you can take unlimited days off? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. right yeah. that's what yeah. it felt but like no, no one takes any time off because, exactly you end yeah. up taking fewer fewer days off because you're too scared to ask or inconvenience yeah. or the workflow comes in to you know jeopardize your plans that's what this feels like and i'm not sure i like it so i didn't i didn't so to what uh what nathan was asking before i didn't feel like at any point you were like interrupting us too much i never felt like the I actually didn't have any issues at all with the way that the that you like the GM was able to narratively interrupt by spending fear or by us rolling fear and then you taking over. Mm -hmm. I know through that. I if it, it it almost felt more awkward, kind of just like, do I go now? Do I let like someone else go? Like who kind yeah. of goes between us? Do I take two turns? One thing I did like about that is one of the things that like uh, the Tim did as well, where he in in like five E, if you're gonna you know you have to make a saving throw at the end of your turn. You're like, well, that's my whole turn, and it feels yeah. kind of bad. Like that's, it. but Tim was able to attempt to roll out if it didn't work out. But you were able to attempt to at least roll out of an effect and then still go again. You know, like yeah. that didn't necess it didn't yeah. necessarily end your turn, and that's kind of cool. So I, I like, and then Julia, you were able to set up like that turn turn like super wombo combo yeah. into your like crit. And, like that was that was yeah. sick. That it, was it, awesome. it can make for some. It can make for some really dope moments. But it can also be like uh, it's, it feels a bit weird at times. So I don't know. That's, that's like, kind of how I felt. I like the chance of it. Like, say, like some, like you're sitting there, you're watching one of your, like maybe not in this one shot sense because it's kind of like beginner, kind of like getting into it. Yeah. But like, say you've been playing a campaign for years, and you've got one guy. He's got like these combos that he pulls off, but he rolls with fear. But you're planning your whole move. You've only got one HP left. Like, I think it adds that little bit of chance, that little bit of, yeah. like, oh, crap, because of without balance, like, it leads to potentially, like, a TPK even if, like, because then the, the DM could just go off and just annihilate everybody. I, I kind of like it. I think the no initiative part, I, I honestly, to be honest, I wasn't, like, thinking, oh, we're in a battle all time to roll initiative. I never once thought it. I never once, like, yeah. yearned for it. I just kind of was just, like, Let's kill some. Let's kill yeah, some ribbits. Sure. Let's kill some skeletons. Like it's, let's I liked it more it. than I thought I was going to, for sure. Same. I yeah, it yeah. Definitely more than yeah. I expected. To. I thought it was. It's me too. I thought I'd miss saying like roll for initiative, but I think just saying like okay, what do you do is better, right? Because you could all just decide. Like there's, it's a lot more free. Like I really loved how Julio could could move further than he normally could, and then attack, and you know the saving yeah. throw sort of thing, and the but, attack. But ju like, just that, you know, just that two turn part. thing actually shows that this the core of this can work because yeah. when I was doing that, right. It's, it's, it plays on what to say. Like I had to consider that I'd roll with fear. Mm. Right. It was, uh, yes, I can take two turns, but I'm about to roll. And if I roll field, then I can't, I don't get to really do the second part of this freaking turn that I'm trying to line up. And so I like, I, I really like that part of it. I, I have I'm a question just... for the GM. I have yep. a question for the GM. Um, one thing that seemed it from my perspective seemed difficult was us succeeding with fear it felt like there weren't a lot of like it's it, the talks in the rules about like there's a consequence there's a like some you get what you want but something kind of bad happens and that felt that felt challenging to implement i'm curious like how did you feel trying to do that that's i think the the hardest part i i don't yeah. think i did a great job introducing like complications and things but then it i think it's probably just going to be an experience thing mm -hmm. i think if we like ran a few more sessions then i'd be like oh, okay like i get the kind of things that would make sense in a given situation like i don't want it to be a complication where like it's your know, world ending when you're trying to climb a rope or something like that <laughs> but i want it to like you succeed and then, yeah, like there's like some minor setback or something. But yeah, I, I think that was, um, I think that's the, the hardest part. That's what I was nervous about. And I don't think we ever really had 
a great example of it, honestly, in this game that I that I did. Thing just popped in my mind here. I, Jeremy's gonna get this because I know him. I don't know if you guys play racket sports at all. No. Okay. Mm, so when you play like, tennis, like, yeah. Jeremy and I have played tennis together, and we have played squash together. And while they're both two racket sports, the way that you follow through on the on the racket really makes a huge difference. Oh. And it's it's a complete opposite. It's actually doing the opposite. And I think that's what's going to happen here. The more that you 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 um, improvise using the system with the, the with the hope and the fear, your ma your mind's going to shift into uh, the consequences and improvising those rather than five e. And at the end of the day, both are improv improvising skills, but it's going to be very different. And you're going to always approach it differently. And when I heard about the system, I was like, you know what? Okay, this is just codifying something that DMs do already. Mm -hmm. We just we yeah. all intuitively do it already. Whenever a, a player, you know, fails or succeeds a, a, a check, like we do, we do some sort of improvising. This just codifies it into the rules and and allows you to like, you know, it it codifies that improvisation into the DMing process. There's something that mm. feels harder about it when it's like written down, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah, you don't have a choice. Yeah. You don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah. I'm not like a, I'm kind of a loosey goosier kind of DM anyway. So oh, I kind of just like Same. run Same. by <laughs> what I think makes <laughs> makes sense. And so I, uh, I don't think I, I followed the, um, those five, you know, yeah. options for dice rolls. I think I don't but, think I had a great you, example in all those. Yeah, you could see it. You, I, I saw you. Like you, I saw you trying to navigate it for like see the wheels turning. I could see that wheel starting to turn for that wheel yeah. turn for the first time. You know, Especially so I appreciate the, when that. I brought up Gerald. You were like, okay, narrative point. Here we go. What are we gonna do? What do I have you roll? And it was, I, it was fun. I really enjoyed Daggerheart. I thought I, I was gonna say, oh, uh, like. I honestly set the bar pretty low for Daggerheart because, I mean, look at Candela Obscura. It doesn't quite hit the same as as other stuff. So I'm like, okay, so we'll see. But this one feels more like their vibe, like Critical Role's yeah. whole vibe of telling mm -hmm. awesome stories while rolling dice. It's yeah. literally just telling awesome stories while rolling dice without the Wizards of the Coast moniker on everything yeah. and it's their own pure ideas it's your own fun way of doing it and i i think you kind of can feel the spirit of maybe earlier like the first two campaigns of of critical role where it's kind of like free it's fun crazy crap is gonna happen all the time because basically we all take a turn like we're like all mini dms in a sense like we're kind of yeah. telling the story that kind of happens on Critical Role, where like, like Laura Bailey will say, "This is what I want to do," and Matt Mercer just just does it. <laughs> like the whole like the cupcake scene in second campaign with Jester. Ah! Like, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Matt Mercer just rolled with it, and it was a beautiful scene. And it's something. Oh that, man, it's like the most famous scene, I think. <laughs> yeah, and, and people even come back and saying, "Oh well, like in Five E, like they were like." Really, he should have had her roll this roll or roll that roll to do that, but he just told the story as it unfolded because it was going to be awesome. And, and that yeah. kind of that beautiful thing about Dagger, it takes away again that that you have to do it this way kind of a deal. It it makes it awesome. It just, if if just there ever was a system that was made for DMs to play, yeah, I think yeah, this yeah. this is the one. Mm. Like like it, someone someone brought up point. mini DMs, right? Like yes, this yeah, is exactly yeah. the kind of game where if you gather a group of DMs together, they're gonna be able to play <laughs> this so much better than Five E. Because I don't know if you've ever had the up the 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 joy of uh, DMing for a forever DM. Oh but, yeah, I but it, it it is sometimes a challenge. <laughs> it's sometimes a challenge to go from player to DM and vice versa. And but I think in this game, the, the transition would be seamless. Mm. I think it's a good point. I think it's a good point. But I, I definitely I, I agree. Like this this feels like the most like embodying the critical role ethos like into a game into a system. Like this definitely does it better than than 
like five because like to make to do this in 5e you just have to ignore the book 90 percent of the time and yeah i think this, this is it's and there's nothing wrong with that and like people can play that their tables like that and critical role has made an insane success story out of literally doing that but i think like, if you want that kind of experience in a way that's more designed for it I think this definitely lends itself to that a lot better. Like I think like you did a great job handling those narrative moments and it really it really felt like we were in control more than you were a lot of the times. At least that's how like the perception that I got. And that was really cool. That was a fun experience. Like that was I really enjoyed I thought you handled those moments great. Like I don't I had a ton of fun. That was great. I, I kind of I don't know that I set the bar low, but I I I probably had pretty mid expectations heading into it. And yeah. I think I was quite surprise there's definitely some things that are a bit weird and a bit awkward some tuning is definitely needed but like overall i definitely i had a much better time than i expected to have playing the game for sure i, I want to know as the dm what it was like to run the the creatures yeah really so i i really like the fear and the action economy yeah. uh, as a dm like it felt great um because it felt like every action you get i get one and so mm-hmm. like the action economy is well spread out, you know, like you have, I have a, I can have a bunch of skeletons, but they're not all going to attack because, yeah. you know, I only have so many actions, so it's going to be more fair. I mean, depending on what special abilities that or whatnot, but, but that's great. And I really like, you can exchange between fear to like power attacks or to get more attacks. Um, I, I am really big fan of the fear mechanic um, as a DM because, uh, you know, like, in the rules, there's a lot of things you can do with fear. You know, like, if I wanted to make some massive change to the campaign or, like, to the, to the session, I can just, like, spend a couple of fear and say, like, okay, like, this is not going the way I want it to, and I'm just going to, like, force it to happen, <laughs> you know? Like, uh, you're like, whatever. Like, um, you know, you can spend fear to, to add some additional challenge, you know? Like, oh, I wasn't expecting you to to do it this way and it's probably going to be too easy there so i'm going to spend a fear to let you know like you did a good job but i'm going to make your life more difficult to add a challenge so, so did you feel like the fear was a uh, almost semi-quantitative way of smudging i feel like it can be um definitely for me i was pretty scant on fear Unfortunately, you guys did not, did not roll fear in that last fight. I'm like, where's this fear? I have so many cool <laughs> abilities, but at the same time, like, I just need to make attacks, so I just got to spend them to make attacks. Um, but yeah, I feel like in a long campaign, it would be really fun to have that fear to like smudge, and it's kind of again, kind of like we are all building the game, and it's like a nod to you, like, okay, I I want you to know I'm like fudging things here, but I'm doing it within. Yeah these bounds and because you um, rolled like to make the story before. interesting <laughs> right yeah yeah like oh like you guys have been creaming through this and so like i need to you know how, was it how did, while in the fights did you feel at any point like how were you able to go with the tempo of it did you kind of get a sense of how the fights would turn out was there ever a point where you were scared for us were you ever scared of us I mean, that last fight was, you guys just kept critting, and uh, that was uh, more than I could handle. I was hoping for more fear, and I felt like it could have been um, a more close fight. I was hoping I'd take, like, one of you guys down, but I just didn't have enough fear to, like, power the effects. Uh, yeah. So I feel like there's chances for that to happen, but this is, was unlikely, right? Uh, but I feel like it's more likely that the battle will go more smoothly to the way the dm is expecting because your guys roles mm-hmm. i think like really on average you're going to hit more um yeah because of it's the, because the 2d12 2D system yeah exactly um and and because the uh the way that the hp works it's like a little more like um reliable the way that you're like expecting yeah. damage to come through and whatnot uh, so I think mixing all those things together, I feel like it would be a lot easier to DM difficult fights because you have those fear mechanics and you can kind of fudge the way things go in that way. Like if it's like if you have a bunch of fear, you know, you can like give yourself advantage to attacks and like increase the damage that you deal and stuff like that to like 
really ramp things up if they're not going the way you expect. Um, but I, yeah, I, I really liked it and I'd, I'd love to like run more and see how it feels. I feel yeah. like oh. with same, like with, um, us as players with no initiative, we can jump in and attack, but also with the DM without initiative and with those t- fear tokens and action tokens kind of built up, like can it works to their benefit as much as it works to the players. Cause like say in 5e you've got your your boss monster is like he just went his turn and now he's got five other people who you got a paladin who's got divine smite you're an undead you've got the barbarian who's raging you got all these things then there's really nothing you can really do to interject other than maybe like a legendary resistance here or there but even those are finite but like yeah say like with that you could probably had we rolled worse like jump in a lot more and like yeah. not have to wait for us to completely obliterate half the skeletons already <laughs> or even like say a dragon like we've narrowed it down to like 7 HP like it would be in 5e we could just jump in and attack how did it feel casting without spell slots I was gonna ask Alex I wanted to hear his thoughts on just yeah. all of that because yeah it, it's really weird because number one the spells that I picked up, which are from like the Grimoires, where they each come with three different spells, um, they felt strangely powerful because, like, I had the scepter, which was a weapon, but I had two spells that I could also use as weapons effectively. So I could just change and get a special effect if I wanted it, more or less. And then, of course, the armor one, which was a really nice support buff spell, uh, not really having any limiters just yet, was also kind of funny to just be able to do it almost at will like it has hope but still you can get quite a lot of mileage out of that yeah um what was interesting is that technically like the song and my inspiring words were also spells but because they didn't have any action rolls required and they were only like marking stress thinking back on it uh i also didn't fully read through the rules i don't know if there's a stipulation but with how seamless combat is supposed to go i wonder if like would I have been able to interject and be like, right before you do, I say an inspiring word, and now you have an extra hope for this role that you are about to do when you attack this enemy. Or I mark a stress, so now you can use a stress to do another cool ability that you have. If that's allowed, which I'm not 100% sure on, that would make a support character really kind of interesting, at least in my mind, given that you can actually now tee up for another person's big swing like right as they're doing it instead of having to like plan a few turns ahead you can just jump in and go all right you're gonna do something cool let's make it cooler and then uh whatever the bonus is right that's yeah that makes that makes a lot of sense point. to me mm-hmm. yeah that's a great point i feel like that's a, i didn't even think about that i feel like you can i feel like that's almost like the intention is that it is supposed to be that it's almost supposed to be that fluid because and you do that and then the gym gets another fear, right? Like, mm. any, or it gets another action, like get another action token, not another fear. They get another action token. So it's like you can do whatever you want, whatever you want. But I, I, I feel like you're right. That that's a great like boon to the support player. Like they get to really like, like you said. Sometimes if you, you sit there, you're planning like oh, I'm going to do this, do this, do this, and then mm. it all goes horribly wrong. And you're not able to actually <laughs> accomplish anything. And then you're staring and looking at your character sheet. You're like, I don't even know what I'm going to do anymore. But when you can just say, I'm just going to do this. And also, the bard abilities feel really They do. They, they really feel good. good. Particularly they feel really powerful. Good. Was, <laughs> particularly <laughs> influential. Really yeah, they feel really good. I, I yeah. picked a lot that meant to, like, were meant to be supportive and, like, give hope and seem powerful. But the fact yeah. that, because, like, I think we touched on it, sort of how the classes share, like, their domains and they share their abilities. Yeah. Bard shares the Grimoire Codex domain with Wizard, which Wizards meant to po- or supposed to have like a lot of options that can potentially be very powerful, and that feels a little gamey to me, which I like. I like getting a bunch of effects that are going to synergize and be really like nice mechanically. But whether or not that's for every table, I don't know. Um, but yeah, Bard Bard for sure felt interesting, uh, definitely me like battle it really felt like there were like ebbs and flows of battle like it because it felt like you know like i had a wave and yeah. then you like fought back and then i had a wave you know like it felt it felt very like um fun that way yeah. in my mind 
give and take. What I noticed, uh, when we're going back to when we were talking about um, who takes their turn when, what I noticed is that a lot of us would like piggyback onto someone else attacked a specific enemy, and we were either thinking of attacking that enemy or just spur of the moment decided, I'll do that sort of same thing. And that like helped the flow of combat when we weren't exactly sure when to take our turns. It was a yeah. bit of like a kick in the butt to be like, okay, well, you just almost killed that thing. I will help almost kill that thing. Or like, let's see if we can just get rid of it right here, right now. It felt and, like a like a narrative moment, like when Julio came over and did that like swirling mm-hmm. blade thing, and I was like, well, I think I even said I was like very inspired by that. I take yeah. my sword and just go for the swing, and yeah. that kind of I I I definitely like I I agree with that that idea right there. But it's like you almost felt like narratively motivated for like it just yeah. it just makes sense. That it's my turn now. Yeah. So I just take out my sword. But, and do but it. not that, only that was that was kind of cool. Not only does it make yeah, sense, but, but if you were to compare the same sequence of of of, of moves, five uh, e and, and Daggerheart, there's a disjointness about it that would have happened in five e. We could have done the exact same thing. I could have come up, yeah. rocked up, killed them, and then you know your turn is three move three three down in the initiative, and you continue doing that. But it wouldn't have had the same narrative yeah. impact as. Yeah. Oh, you're doing it now. We're getting rid of this guy <laughs> now. And, and yeah, that that sure. this joint that that moment that pause that like it would have been stuck in limbo almost, and it just doesn't have the same impact. I agree. Some I think it was Nathan mentioned about like the ebbs and flows. I definitely felt that a bit more here for sure than in Five E, and that was really cool. That was yeah. I'm I'm, I'm super happy with the combat. Honestly, I, I want to ask. Um, I've heard criticism say like people players are afraid to just like roll at all because it could give meta currency to the DM uh, or you know like whatever like uh, or generate you know hope potentially but usually they're like I don't want to give more fear I don't want to fail in a way that's like gonna stock up for the next battle or something did you guys feel that at all? A little I feel bit. Like that's like yeah. Obviously we we don't want to give the DM any more advantages than it already has. But at the same time, I feel that just it's just silly. It's just yeah, I know. Like you, obviously, we don't want to like build it up, but then the narrative kind of just falls short, and the game kind of just doesn't become a game. Just becomes a bunch of dudes standing <laughs> around talking about some fantasy stuff. All right, playing make believe. Right? It, does, it loses that fun game aspect of it. That's not the kind of thing that ever like <laughs> Julio can definitely test. That would ever bother me. Like I would just. <laughs> I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do because it's what I would do in the game, and it's I'm like I I, I I will maybe consider it. I'll think about it. Like, oh, okay, he'll have a thing, and I'm like, eh, but it's what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna do. It, so I just do it anyway. And and like, yeah, I, I can definitely see how certain people would really like you would end up in like a decision paralysis kind of situation where you're like, oh, I really don't want to do that. I don't want to do that because I don't want to roll and. And but at the same time, I also think there's a flip side to that where it's really interesting. Where I think a couple times Julio and Alex both had moves where it was like, "Well, I'm gonna do this, and this is gonna be like a, it's gonna set up like a sick combo, and it and it incidentally doesn't have a role associated with it." And th- I think those moments feel really powerful when you're like, "I can yeah. do this, I can do this, I can do this," and there happens to be no role, and that's that, that mm-hmm. is cool to me. That stuck out as being cool. So rolling that, fewer like, dice. <laughs> it's yeah, cooler, it's more fun. <laughs> no, yeah. I think they're onto something. Thought? I think. <laughs> Who would have thought? Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't ask for a lot of roles, and yeah, I, I think maybe I could have asked for more roles, like knowledge checks or whatnot. Personally, I don't really like knowledge checks. Honestly, even in five e, yeah. I feel like you know, like you're a wizard and you studied amazing magic, and they're like, oh, uh, you can't even tell like what this basic magic thing is because you rolled a one. You're like, that makes no sense. Um, I think the system but, uh, is set up to to dissuade superfluous and and frivolous. That's what, that's exactly what I think. I think like both sides are like I don't want to just demand roles for nothing because it could give you stuff. It could give me stuff. Like you, you know. I think that's part of Five E's nature with the full skill list. Is that as a DM, you feel like when an opportunity arises to have a player actually use a skill, you want to have them use the skill because it's there and presumably they put points into it or like they want to use it. But realistically, there shouldn't necessarily always be a role. Yeah, you should just know what is going to happen or 
uh, what the knowledge rule is, or you should just be able to do the thing. And so it kind of is a little counterproductive, I suppose. Yeah, it's like oh, it's almost like the higher your modifier is, the less the less you should actually have to roll it. Yeah, <laughs> and like this a kind of in five V. Yeah, you just yeah. Reliable like, talent. Like reliable talent, yeah. yeah. And, and this kind of like over. embodies a bit more of that where it just feels like... It, it, I didn't mind the lack of roles, really, because it just kind of felt... It just it felt like it narratively made sense. Like it felt like it just made sense in the game. Like I felt mm. like when you called roles when the, when they, they worked and you didn't call roles because... Boy, I, you you did a, a thing that like I do in, in my games too where it just like if someone says, do I know? And you're like, I don't know, would you? And like, And I think that's like... That to me is always like the right answer to that because like... I'm just the DM. It's your character. You tell me what you know. And I was like, that's that's what I always do as well. So I was like when he did that, I was like, oh, I love that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, there was one thing I was gonna ask. Did you guys? Uh, seemed like you guys had a lot of hope all the time. Did you yeah. guys feel like there was way too much hope and not ways to spend it? Yeah. Yeah. Big, big time. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. That okay. could potentially be from me skewing it a little bit because I did build the character around you giving hope fun. and I like tried to get as many abilities as possible and I figured that might happen. But even then, just being able to roll and you might roll with fear, but you also might always generate hope as well. Yeah. And if you're not spending it, then yeah, there's probably going to be an excess of hope as well. Yeah. Yeah, Some I feel like maybe we didn't there. take advantage of the ways to spend hope because like you can mm-hmm. you can use your experience. Even if you're like in battle, like whatever, you can use um, yeah. you can you can aid your ally. So like if you're beside them, you can you can like help them in battle and that yeah. use a hope to yeah. to help them. Um, and the tag team, I think uh, that's you spend three hope and you can do like a com- combo attack of something cool. Uh, so those I think would be hopefully would be ways to to yeah. remove hopefully. more hope hopefully. hope hope hopefully. hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so oh. overall, that was pretty fun. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It was good. Yeah, I, maybe I, I had a blast. Right? In the future, if you guys want, I'm down. <laughs> sure, I'm That's happy to to extend and uh, do more do more more frog tongues in the future. Yeah. Play test too. So you guys don't know this about me because you know we just met. I have a thing with saliva. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> it's like I can't. You know, it's it's borderline. Yeah, it's borderline phobia. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Okay. Which no, is no, no, weird given my day it. job, but you know what? Like lean into it. It's funny. better. Lean into it. I have a it's question for Sam. Has Sam anyone ever told you that you sound like Mr. Beast? I sound like Mr. Beast? Yeah, I don't know. A regular like, voice? Yeah. <laughs> like less really? yelling because Mr. Beast is <laughs> yeah, less yelling. yelling. But <laughs> uh, No, uh, no one's ever told right. me I sound like Mr. Okay. Beast. All right. Uh, that's either a compliment or not, because Mr. Beast <laughs> is loved and hated by, <laughs> by so many people. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I take it as a compliment. <laughs> that's cool. I think so. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, I'm probably going to head all out. Right. It's pro- yeah, it's I got it. Thank you for tuning in. This has been a blast to do. I really enjoy playing with these awesome people. And I really appreciate them hopping on and testing out Daggerheart one shot with me. If you enjoyed hearing about it and enjoyed the playthrough, let me know. As for me, I really enjoyed Daggerheart more than I thought I would. There's a lot I still need to learn and think about, and I'll be making a video about that later. Uh, But for now, I hope you enjoyed it and have a great day.